Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Every teaching of faith is taught as a mechanism to extract spiritual things or to convert spiritual things. So all kinds of lusts and carnality emanate from that kind of aberrated foundation. Again, remember, we are not talking of good or bad people here. We are talking about the opportunity to have received truth or otherwise. There is no other name under heaven. There are people, the moment they were born again, the next thing they were taught about was prosperity very destructive foundation you don't get someone born again and the next thing you are teaching is cars and houses no cars and houses and prosperity is important but there is a level of growth that is required for that teaching to now profit the person you don't teach anything to any believer at any time and say it does not matter the construction has to be systemic are we together now so you ask an average believer give me a rundown if i get born again mention the seven major doctrines i should focus on they can't tell you they will just say just give your life to christ find out your talent find out whether you are a musician if you're a musician join a prayer band join a um, um, worship team if you're a prayer warrior join this if you're a prophet hang around and be faithful serve the man of god one day you'll be around. and and you see all these kinds of things is dangerous there are people who get born again and in less than one month they have been ordained as pastors just because of the the impact of their salvation experience they started prophesying and seeing visions and the man said this is this is a potential uh, branch pastor and the next thing oil is poured on his head now he becomes a man of god and there are gaps in his knowledge is God speaking to us? There are people who got born again and the next thing they had was love. What did they hear? Love. Not love of God. Love of fellowship, brethren, relationship, marriage. How, what kind of a teaching is that? As soon as you are born again, the next thing, instead of you to see God, you are seeing men or women and you are already calculating. 19 years you are thinking already i will have five children four children because that, i'm not please i'm not saying the preachers of this thing are wrong i'm just trying to arrange we're discussing growth systems are we together so instead of that individual to be pressing towards god the only thing you come for prayer you come for worship you come and you are looking around who is looking at me who is a potential uh, 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 um, suitor who is a potential you know, all kinds of things and then you don't grow there are even people because of that kind of teaching they can't pray in tongues lest they not look fine because of the aggression that prayer brings so they pray with a, a level and you see that their, their spirit man is as lean as whatever they can't receive speak and they will not speak because they are aware Something has been activated that had no business being activated. There are people who get born again, 
and the next thing pressure is put on them to produce results with their faith are we together now and they don't learn that there is a law of process in spiritual growth in two weeks they want to get a car in two weeks they want to build a house in two weeks they want to start wearing suits like the men of god to prove that their faith is working and to the degree to which they bring physical results they are accredited by structures that have been set to show they are growing so many people will go so far to borrow suits borrow shoe borrow everything and bring a regalia that shows that the word is working you don't like me this night it's too early there's a lot to talk about this is just on point one it matters your spiritual foundation it matters how it was laid it matters the value you have for the word today is largely a reflection of the value the person who saved and mentored you showed you he had over the word there were people who every time you came to their office you would see them studying and it's not like you really like the word but they challenge you and you just carried your bible you know people don't buy strong concordance again people don't buy dicks ah gone are the days of dicks i mean nobody even talks dicks just find a simple clear translation and it's all right no appetite for spiritual growth your spiritual foundation is what will support you in the days that come your spiritual foundation is what will support you in the days when it looks like the word of god is not working listen carefully the bible says jesus himself speaking said the wind came the rain came on the structure and his foundation i tell you why a lot of people continue to curse god on his face lord if you are god why am i still barren if you are god why am i this why did i lose a loved one there is, there is no difference between loving god and not even I, I hate all of this i prayed and prayed and prayed that i will not go to the hospital but i still went lord you are not faithful something about your foundation something about god may have been wrongly taught you because let me tell you my brothers and my sisters when your foundation is solid the rains will come everything will come when it leaks you will stand stand strong and stand solid job was a man whose foundation was tested i'm not bringing a theological debate as to the basis of job's predicament but job got to a point in his life do you know what it means to lose all your children in one day comma lose all your possession in one day lose everything in one day his friends left him one friend left you you are almost dying now here is a man almost all his friends left him and then in addition to that his body was challenged with sores from head to toe and job sat down frustrated the wife frustrated the three friends came they looked at him after seven days they had a discussion and left job was left alone i wish i would tell you that life would never test your foundation my precious people i wish i would tell you that you will never have any cause to thank god for your stability but you will you will People have lost loved ones and didn't know what to say. They checked their Bible from Genesis to Revelation and could not find a scripture that will help explain. What do you do when your life is a contrast of what is written? What do you do when you have exhausted your obedience and everything you know to do, yet the results refuse to change? Listen to me. I teach you the power of spiritual foundations what do you do when the more you pray the more you engage it looks like darkness continues to rise what do you do when you give all that you have and yet you do not have food to eat what do you do when your enemies continue to excel and you keep going down what do you do when you pray and fast and you're a man of god who loves your people with all their heart and the church continues to reduce 
What do you do when you raise your children with the word of God? You teach them the ways of God. And then they become teenagers and go haywire. You were not a rebel. You taught them well. You prayed for them. You laid hands on them. You fasted. But every one of them made their choice. I've chosen my life. And God is not part of the choice. And society looks at you and they say, Oh dear, you are a failed father. You are a failed mother. You are a failed pastor. What do you do when men cannot understand what is happening in your life? What do you do when you cannot understand what is happening in your life? Listen very carefully. I show you the way of strength. Foundations. This is where men are separated from boys. It's not the building. It's the foundation. What do you do when you have fasted again and again and again and again and again and you cannot take in? Every man of God has prayed for you. Joshua Selman prayed for you. Every man of God you honor prayed for you. Prophecies continue to come. Months become years. Years become decades. And not one child will come. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though he slay me, I will never curse him with my mouth. I show you how to be solid. Many believers are weak. At everything that shakes them, they curse God, curse men of God, curse Christianity. A pastor gets ordained in ministry with the hope that he will receive 50,000 or 100,000 as support from missionaries. And something happens and he does not receive that support. After four or five years, he tells his wife, look, it was never ministry. Remember, my plan was to start a poultry. It's just that they called me and said, let me come and work for God. And now, since this salary is not coming, God, you and your scam, get out of my life. They leave God didn't it happen to the disciples? Jesus is gone. On the cross. They didn't hear anything again. Peter said, I go fishing. The rest say, we go with you. Let's go. Let's go back and leave this guy. When Joseph was in that prison, sitting quietly, meditating on his dream and watching the noisemakers, everybody explaining why he entered the prison. I came here because I stole. I came here because I annoyed the king. I didn't make his grape juice well. And he drove me into this prison. And Joseph sits down. What happens when your innocence takes you to prison? Innocence will not always take you to the throne. Ask Mandela. It may always take you to the prison. What happens when you obeyed God and gave that house? God said, sow the house. You had God. You sowed the house and thought in two months a blessing will come. In five years, you are still roaming around squatting. And you have become a testimony. You have become an example to warn many believers. Every time they are talking about not hearing God, you are the sample they use. They say, don't be confused and don't subject yourself to divination like this man. Whereas you are there and you say, God, didn't you speak? And that's the only time you hear him. I spoke. So what else? Oh God, he doesn't see a reason to talk. I've taught you that when God is silent, he is speaking. Foundations are powerful. The days that come will require men and women, not just men who have results, but men who have foundation. If your strength is in your car, your certificate, your ministry, koinonia, Joshua Selman, connections, you will never be able to stand. A point will come in your life, you will find out that everything that is not Jesus is like a shadow. It's true. It's difficult. The deception of things can make you think they can stand with him. A time will come when you sit down and um, you look at life from the eyes of an elder and you say, in this life, the only thing that matters, of reading many books, there is no end. And much study is a weariness to the soul.
there is no other foundation than Christ. I know He will bless me, but what happens if He does not bless me? I know He gives children, but what happens if His child does not come? I know He gives prosperity, but what happens if I do not prosper? I trusted Him and I saw a vision that my uncle would not die. Even when my uncle died, I was sleeping and I saw his spirit. And I saw that he would come back to life. And I came back with a group of prayer warriors, you may be thinking. And we prayed for him and he did not come back to life. What happens? When it looks like you have episodes of negative events, things that negate scripture, do you have the stamina to still trust God? Or will you get distracted? And your entire life is now trusting God for answers. That you get to a point where you are so matured and you say, Lord, I'm never going to discuss these issues. My love for you is bigger than them. I trust you so much. Let's continue the training as if I'm not in the midst of fire. And God says, what kind of brand are you? Hmm. You have captured my heart consume my heart with your love hey you have captured my heart consume my heart with your love sing it from the depth of your heart lord you have captured my heart Consume my heart with your love. Hallelujah. That a time comes when all your notebooks have become full and not one of what God said has come to pass. You are just writing. He keeps waking you every night as if he's fulfilling everything. Keep writing. In that book you wrote that you should have gone to your permanent site. In that book you wrote that you should have had 500 members. And after 5-10 years, you still have 70 members. You have gone for every conference. You are not a rebel. Your heart is opened. What happens? Everybody say foundation. This is it. The strength of your foundation. While the winds blow, heaven is watching. Let's see what happens. And all of a sudden they see the prayer warrior turn to God and say, Lord, let me tell you, I really hate you. Take this from me. Make sure the angels take it to the throne room. I hate you. Get out of my life and let me have my life back. And God says, I love you, but I respect your will. You've made your choice. Ah, but there are others. With no results, you say, Lord, you say, I don't have results. Are you not everything? Every other thing is an addition. I cannot cry when I have you. Because you are everything to me. Listen, you must get to a point where this is no longer a sermon. But it is true. I vowed a vow in my life that I will never get to a point in my life where I will be offended in God. I will never get to a point in my life where results or no results control my hunger and my love for God. No. Too small a reason. If God never blesses me in this life again, I owe Him my allegiance and my love forever. Can I tell you this? You may not have anything human beings call success. Truly speaking, let me tell you, if you have Jesus, you really have everything. It's just that the world may not see it that way. But you are rich in Christ. This is what I've learned. In my little life, I've seen the vanity of anything at all. Life is truly like a vapor. Five minutes without your breath, you are in a coffin. 
your estate is still standing but you are gone every other thing is still standing but you are gone gone and gone for good the Lord wants to correct foundations who told you that if God does not bless you he is not God where did you learn that from whoever told you that the primary reason to serve God is so that you will get a husband and a wife and a breakthrough and a job I'm not saying it's wrong but whoever told you that God works with people based on contract Lord I want to work for you but here is my condition make sure my wife comes before December make sure my husband comes before January make sure my appointment letter comes by next week except you are not God it doesn't come and goes uh -uh, you've gone too far God remains God doesn't matter what happens did you hear what I said God remains God it doesn't matter what happens he said let God be true and all men and all situations liars can you lift your voice where you are and say Lord may I never leave you for anything in this life let nothing in this life bring me to a point where I call you unfaithful let nothing in this life bring me to a point where I have reasons to probe your integrity not my results not my failures not my limitations too small a reason you stand in majesty in a class all by yourself my results have no authorization to validate your integrity and your majesty if the church is never built you are still God if the child never comes you are still God listen to me I show you how to stand on a foundation that no power no cause no yoke can stand against that I find you faithful oh God whether I understand what is happening in my life or not I don't know why my father died I don't know why I lost my mother I don't even know why my pastor died he was coming back from a crusade why will a man of God die but I still count you faithful I don't know what to say to be your audience and then still praise God in the midst of them can you line up the house rent line up the lack of job the lack of a child you are not dancing for a miracle it's your testimony you are telling life I am this grounded I am this grounded mm. I am this grounded no food to eat but I am this grounded and Satan comes to stand close to you like the wife of Job and say why don't you just curse God of what use is being a worker in the house of God when God will keep passing you and blessing strangers when they will come for miracle service and receive and go back and you are still a worker and he's acting as if he's not seeing you listen listen many believers are not taught that when things don't work and you believe God it is also faith faith is not only when results come sometimes faith is why you stand when results don't come listen to me when Jesus hung upon that cross in spite of the pain on his hand it took strength and stamina to remain there the pain did not leave him because he was the son of God because many believers have not been taught that sometimes listen to me that sometimes on your path to growth the weight of what is coming on you will test your foundation 
like a farmer goes to a farm just because you see blisters on a farmer's hand does not mean he's not healthy it means he's hard working listen to me let your interpretation about life and the dealings of things in your life be corrected tonight because there are many of you who are calling god names whereas heaven is clapping for you earth is calling you faithless whereas heaven is standing at an attention and say this young lady lost four people in four months and she's still waking up as usual to pray whereas some ignorant person will see you somewhere and say where is your faith that four people are dying don't get me wrong i believe in the blessings of god but believers must be taught that the solidity the stability of your foundation is tested when things don't work your way and you still call him faithful I heard of a couple, not, not a recent story, from their wedding, happy. They were on their way to the reception and a truck just came and hit them. And that's how the husband died with his bow tie right there. It doesn't matter whether it's a curse or it's a charm or it's an arrow, he's dead. What does such a bride do? You will think people will come to comfort her until you start hearing that she's a witch. That's what people will say. Imagine adding on that precious lady's pain instead of coming to comfort her. They'll say, We've always known this lady has killed her son. Aye. Life can be cruel. If you don't know your God and you cannot stand alone and praise Him alone, if you still need a keyboard and you still need a bass guitar. And you still need a music director your foundation is small there are times that your pain becomes a writer and it will write songs that only you can understand songs that are not supposed to make sense to anybody except you uniquely designed to praise God through your pain I told God there is nothing in life that will ever come to me that will make me look at God and say, God, why? Kai. No. Many people see the things that we do and they think it's because of the result God has brought today. No. The results did not come in one day. Can you love God when you don't understand Him? And you love God when you don't hear Him. Were you taught that a believer is not just one who receives results. Sometimes a believer is one who stands. Not just while he's waiting for results. Read Hebrews 11. Some died without receiving the promise. If you are just going to wait 30 years, it will be okay. But there are people who waited till they died. And the Bible added them and called them elders who obtained what did they obtain now because they died without receiving the promise we need to teach a generation that god is not an atm we need to teach a generation that god is not a politician who is just a job giver remember i'm teaching on growth there are other aspects coming we need to teach a generation that god is not just some some lobbyist no it's god in the beginning god at the end of your life if i have god and people just look at them when people testify and we see what they are saying they got i got a new job this is the certificate we clap and we somebody will help you and roll on the ground for your own sake but when people get say oh, i was born again i gave my life to jesus christ people just say oh congratulations so you go and join the queue of, and know what we are going There are many questions 
in your mind now the answer is what you are hearing if you really love god beyond certain levels there will be need to ask that question faithful and faithful and true is the reason why many preachers cannot go to funerals what are they going to say what happens when you have conducted a miracle service and right after that someone dies and you are asked to come and preach the people now you and they say pastor why did this man die God is faithful, Lord. Even when you do not have answers, God is greater. God is faithful. He's mighty. What I go through or do not go through should never ever be a reason to show His faithfulness. Please sit down. Your foundation. Your foundation. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19. Let's tie up this first point. Just the A part. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19. It says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God does what? Standard sure. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standard sure. So when you build on Christ, you will stand sure. Growth systems. I needed to just walk this out with us. So that we don't get excited because of the other things that I'm going to be sharing and saying. And forget the fact that if your foundation is faulty. You know, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Please look up. Honestly speaking, I get hundreds of text messages every day from people. You can imagine because of the nature of what I do, people send me text messages from all around just requesting prayer or just letting me know the things happening around their lives. And sometimes I use those text messages to gauge both the level of growth and the spiritual orientation of the people. I am amazed sometimes at how, how offended people can be over the matters that they think they are trusting God for a miracle for that they have not yet gotten. People have sent all kinds of text messages to my phone abusing both me and God for not getting school fees. See that? Since he's, you, you can't see him. The one who has clearly said he's representing him. You insult me and ask me to help and tell God that you insulted both of us. Just because Hufis did not come. There are people who they are panic and the text messages. Just because a child falls ill. Oh boy. The text messages they write. Why is God doing this and that? I'm a giver. I'm a tighter. Why is he saying this? And then later on, maybe I'm in a meeting and you are not answering again. You see, this is the kind of thing I'm saying. And God is not faithful and blah, blah. All for that. Solid. When the Shunammite woman's son died, the prophet sent Gehazi. He said, go and find out from that woman. This is a child that is dead already. When she met Gehazi, say it's all well. What did the woman say? All is well. Let me just go and see the prophet. He said, yeah, and imagine, no, 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 no. Don't worry. These are people who have strong foundations. What about Esther Hadassah? I shared with you in one of the days here. The king, there was an emergency. Her man is plotting to destroy the people of God. And then they are asking her. Should I grant anything? No, 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 king. Please take your time. I just want to prepare a banquet for you. Can you be calm under pressure? It's proof of stability. It's not just a proof of maturity. Some things are more than just age and psychology. It's a reflection of knowledge of God. That my panic, regardless of how I go around it, 
makes no difference except God built a house. I will labor in vain and stroll around from pillar to post. So my soul find rest. Find rest. Like something that is missing and you found it. Find rest. Number two, let's hurry up. The excellency of your spiritual foundation is number one. Number two. Now pay attention. We finish handing over everything to the Lord. But that's not all it takes to grow. The second key, if you want to grow and grow sustainably, is you have to understand the cosmos. Please write it down. An understanding of this earth and the world system. You will never grow if you do not understand the world that you are living in. The cosmos. This social system. It's not enough to understand God's kingdom alone. You have to understand this world. My God. How many believers are ignorant of the cosmos? We do not understand how this system works. And so we cannot thrive and grow. Jesus prayed a prayer, John chapter 17. We'll read a few scriptures here. Please pay attention and let's learn. John chapter 17, we'll read from verse 15 to, 7, to 21. 15 to 21. Please look up everyone, it's projected. This is the prayer of Jesus. How many of you know that when Jesus prays, it will be answered? I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Not from evil. From the evil. Next verse. They are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. Uh huh. Sanctify them through your truth. Thy word is truth. Next verse, 221. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have sent them into the world. For their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. 20. Neither pray I for these alone. This is where you come in now. But for them also which shall believe on me through their word. 21. That they may be one. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou sent me. Jesus is praying, and he's saying that, Father, I'm keeping them in this system, the same way I walk through this system. Their life will be in the similitude of my experience in this system. Sanctify them, separate them, garrison them. On the strength of your word. Your word is truth. Listen to me. There are many things the Bible says about this world. The earth, but the world. The social sphere. Most believers may know God, but they are ignorant about the world system. And many times, back to 40 foundations again, we are taught that once you know God, that's all and that's enough. As important as that is, you need to have intelligence over the world that you live in. The Bible tells us so many things about this cosmos, this social system. Let's look at a few of them. Number one. First John chapter 5. Write down these scriptures. Please write all of them. Understanding the cosmos, understanding the world system as a spiritual growth system or a, a kingdom growth system. First John chapter 5 from verse 4 and 5. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. The world again, overcometh the world. So the world and the system can be overcome. It says, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Verse 5. Who is he that overcometh the world? 
but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. So the Bible tells us that this system can be conquered. That a man can rise above it. It's an information God is giving you. That regardless of how the world is, you have an advantage. There is a provision where the saints can rise above the grip of the world. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 18, please. Mm. It's projected. If you can see it, please let's read together. One to read. Let no man deceive himself. Uh huh. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Let me explain to you what he's saying. That means that there is a methodology. There is an approach to life as defined by the cosmos. Are we together now? And that on the strength of your understanding their way of doing things, you may believe you are wise. And the Bible says, compared to God's dimension of wisdom, it is deception. So it says, let him become a fool. It doesn't mean to be void of knowledge and understanding. It means to subscribe to another system that may make you look like a fool based on God's standard. So that you will be truly wise. He tells you this. That the system, the modus operandi of the cosmos is antichrist. Is against the operation of the kingdom. John 14, 27. John 14, 27. After that we'll go to 1 John 3 and verse 1. John 14, 27. Look up please. Another information Jesus is giving us here. Please look up those outside. Make sure you're following. He says peace. Now he's talking of peace here. I live with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world giveth. Give I unto you. He says, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. That means these possibilities exist for as long as you are in this world. The tendency for being perturbed and being in fear is something that will continue. It will attempt to haunt you. But he's saying the antidote to it is that I have routed my peace in some way and I have given it unto you. My peace. I give unto you. First John chapter 3 and verse 1. Don't be tired. You are learning something. First John 3 and verse 1. Let's read. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God. It says, Therefore, the world knoweth us not. Why? Because it knew him not. Do you know what this means? God is revealing to you through Apostle John that influence in the world system for a believer doesn't come easy. It is difficult to be known. It says the world knoweth us not. They will not recognize us. It will, it will until they exhaust their options, they will not easily recognize you. So you can be a Christian lecturer and be the best in your department and the system will continue to ignore you until you do something that makes them to not have a choice that means every believer recognized by the cosmos it is because the cosmos did not have an option this is what he's saying jesus was doing a lot of things and they refused to acknowledge it people will return back with testimonies i am a leper look at my hands i said forget about that guy Nicodemus came and said, Rabbi, we know we have been studying. We have been, we've taken your miracles as a case study. And we know you are a man sent from God. Why didn't they say it in the open? Behold a man sent from God. Jesus is standing with Barabbas, a thief. And they would allow Barabbas to go and continue harassing as a capon. Because of how they hated Jesus. He's giving us an information here. The information is not just that we are sons of God alone. But he's telling you that influence in the cosmos. If you are not born again. And you refuse to subscribe to God's ways. It's easy. So do not be surprised. When you are doing a lot of great things as a believer. And people refuse to acknowledge you. 
you are the reason why this company is rising and when it, if they have to appreciate you they generalize it all the staff have been hard working you have been serious but when a non-christian is there they isolate the person and so lavishly celebrate the person to offend you find comfort he opened your eyes to see that the world knoweth us not the word know there means approve recognize accredit celebrate james chapter 4 and verse 4 god is giving us wisdom james 4 and verse 4 look at me ye adulterers and adulteresses know ye not that friendship aha uh -huh, he's giving an information friendship with the world is enmity with god whosoever will be a friend of the world is an enemy of god uh oh oh uh oh oh uh oh uh oh uh oh uh oh now this is a, an interesting one don't be friends how do you relate don't be friends friendship with the world is enmity with god so how do you collect your salary how do you apply for a job how do you go for a birthday party of a business partner who is an unbeliever who you have to work together with that means when a scripture looks obviously wrong it means you have to look again are we together now the idea of friendship here listen very carefully is not relationship you must understand now he's not saying to not relate with the world friendship here he's talking of an attachment a fraternity with respect to your allegiance with respect to your values with respect to the government you submit to this is the context that james is talking about because as you will learn and you have learned here that everything multiplies on the basis of relationship many believers have erroneously carried this scripture and they have rejected every good thing in their life why because the bible talks of friendship with the world he's not saying to not love non-christians no he's not saying to not participate in non-christian activities that's not what he's saying He's talking about the fact that no matter how you relate with these people, it is important for you to understand that anything that threatens your convictions, your values, and ultimately your allegiance to God is fighting Him in your life. Are we together? Two more scriptures and then we'll tie this up. First Timothy chapter 6, 7 and 8. I found this scripture and it blessed me so much. First Timothy 6 and then 7 and 8. We would have started from 6 but no problem. We will hurry up because of time. Look at this. Apostle Paul is giving us another information about this world that we need to learn. What's the information? Read with me. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain that we can carry nothing out of it. Now this is a very good information. What is the information? You brought nothing into this world. And on your way out, you are not carrying anything you found here out. Verse 8. And having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. Now listen very carefully. That means he is trying to tell you that while you interact with the cosmos, that you should be able to priorize, prioritize your life in a way and manner that does not allow you forget that all of these things the cars and the houses is simply supposed to define your comfort within your stay are we together it's like renting a room in a hotel because you are there for one week if all of a sudden you get so obsessed with the activity of that hotel as if you are not going to leave again one week will clock and you did not even maximize the state the purpose of renting the apartment is to allow you either have a meeting or rest or do whatever you have to do so he's giving you here a mindset of contentment that comes from knowing it tries to give you the understanding of a pilgrim that nothing other than god is worth dying for are, are you getting the understanding here now yes 
So by the time people act as if they would die for money, as if they would die for position, as if they would die for this, this is what they are violating. We brought nothing. There is no child that was born with an ATM. You came out from your mother's womb and said, this is my ATM with my name, I brought it from heaven. No. Nobody came with a key to any house. Nobody came with a Mercedes-Benz key out of his mother's womb. No. When you know this, you can look at certain things in life and just say, let it go. And they say, why? For I brought nothing. Hmm. This is a revelation that will even help you in giving. You mean you just gave everything away? I brought nothing to this world. If I fall down and I die today, even this Bible will not follow me. Because it didn't come with me. Every story was written on earth here. That means the one thing I can take out of the earth, I must treasure it. The one thing that I can take out. Hmm. Believers, let's not live like fools. We must understand the cosmos. Thank God for money. Thank God for cars. And let me tell you this, do, do not make a mistake of thinking I'm endorsing poverty or failure far from it. This teaching was designed to cause you to grow. This is how we grow, by being prepared to lose things. Nothing in this world should so possess you that you cannot lose it. That is a devil and that is a cause. Joshua Selman, the Lord has a need for your car. Let it go, oh God, it's yours. The Lord has a need for your house. Let it go. The Lord has a need for koinonia. Let it go. The foolish man was a foolish rich man for one reason. He forgot that he did not bring anything. He built bands and said, My soul, find rest not in God. Find rest. When you find rest in prosperity, you are finished already. When you find rest in certificates, you are finished already. When you find rest in ministry, in power, in anointing, you are finished already. We brought nothing to this world. Please don't live your life over my dead body. This ten naira, it must come out. Except I'm, I will wear my father till. Uh -uh. That kind of mindset is the mindset of somebody who does not understand the cosmos. When you know you brought nothing to this world, then you will also know that you must make sure that by the time you are leaving this world, you will live empty. So why are you holding on to many things? Isn't it amazing that those who are really poor are the ones who are holding on to many things. Their hands are so full, God cannot bless them. Most people think it's blessed people who are greedy and stingy. No. That you don't have the resources are proof that your hands are too full to receive from God. It's those who released everything. He said, now give me your hands since you released everything. Understanding the cosmos. I promised you two more scriptures. Let's hurry up. John 16, 33. John 16 and 33. Now, this is a big one. Believers, pay attention. Let's read together. One to read. These things I have spoken to you, uh -huh, that in me ye might find peace. You see peace again? This peace is a very serious thing. In the world... Ye shall have tribulation. You went to school. What does that mean? Whatever it is, it doesn't mean peace. <laughs> Are we together? It doesn't matter how you want to, whether it's emotional, whether it's prophetic, whatever it is, it is certainly not peace. Whatever it is, is the opposite of what God gave you. In this world, you will have tribulation. He says, but be of good cheer. He never said, be of good cheer, the tribulation will not come. There is a system I have provided also to help you overcome. You are not, you are not being cheerful 
just because of nothing you are being cheerful because there is a system that you can route your victory out of it tribulation i don't know what i did that people don't like me i'm a nice man of god i'm a nice business i help people oh dear welcome to the world of men listen the condition to go through tribulation is that you are alive it's not even that you are successful is that you are what alive i am amazed at how many believers fret you know i've shared with you my story years ago it used to bother me a lot every time i'm misunderstood and every time people you know don't seem to be comfortable with me i wonder and i say oh look at i'm very sincere my heart is well meaning what is all this nonsense until i land there is a heavy price for greatness let me educate you tonight my brothers and sisters if you ever believe that just because you are sincere well-meaning nice-hearted wonderful loving soft godly and then the world will have that regard for you please wake up jesus gave us this information welcome to the world he says you, if you are in the world if you go out of it you don't need to worry about this so whilst you've been praying for long life and god answered you better learn what will happen while you are living long you will be amazed to see people who disregard you and will go out of their way to show you you are nothing welcome to the world of man you will be amazed to know how many people will look at your messages and say this is nonsense you will be amazed at how many people will see your sacrifice and say this is nonsense what is there in having three children what is there in being great what is there in a phd i thought you would think everybody will celebrate you in this life and love you no let me tell you believers learn this because you see as believers i hope am i boring you tonight please please learn this you will need it in your life you know most of us as believers we are surrounded by ourselves so there is a culture that we grow with for many years everybody is wonderful even someone who doesn't like you really likes you 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 get what i'm saying so there's nothing like anger and fight when somebody say i hate you it just means you annoyed me now we are used to that soft brotherly warmth and we take that naivety to this strange world of wolves i will we'll come to that scripture you will find out that those that are in this world are not just men there is a name god gave them wolves you study from national geographic channel what wolves can do wolves are not friends do you keep a wolf in your house if another prophet was speaking you would think maybe he drank wine like noah or this this is jesus speaking pay attention to what i'm telling you because the moment believers step out of this place you are sincere and for the first time you've been hearing that they hate people now you are seeing somebody face to face i hate you period why sir this is even why i hate you again and you call joshua selman and say what is this i thought there's anointing for favor how is this supposed to work ask mary what favor did to her was it not because of favor mary got into trouble as soon as mary was declared to be favored of god the first thing that hit her was a scandal who is the real father of this child is it a ghost or a rabbi say i'm a virgin virgin of where and the bible calls that favor listen and learn you will stand in a place where they are giving bribe everybody is bribing and you say no 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 i love jesus christ there's no collecting bribe and because of that someone will look at you face to face and say you irritate me tribulation everybody loves you because you are like them make money get a job bring a new car and dance around and say brothers and sisters this is the faithfulness of god the year of extraordinary fruitfulness we're just in may by next week you will find out that there is now a problem with your shoe 
there is now a problem with your worship have you been taught that everybody should not like you have you been taught that it is okay to be controversial have you been taught that just because you are not loved by all just because there are people who trivialize your value it does not mean you are valueless learn this and be strong on time before ignorance crushes you many people will give up their success because of what people are saying and it's the same people that will run and carry it and say thank you it was a strategy i was hoping you would drop it so i will pick it do you know how many people will continue to pray for you to fail when you are successful they may not be christians they stand like the magi looking at the stars waiting for the report of your failure Hi. this is the world we live in jesus is teaching here look at how jesus is celebrated on a crusade ground and the next thing he enters a city and people are looking at him you mean you've not had that leper this is the guy that healed him so what i remember years ago i don't know if you can remember it, jimmy i went for a meeting in congo and that was when god really started celebrating me everybody was just discerning the grace and this thing was just working everywhere i would go to people would celebrate me discern the grace of god and sincerely honor me and i went for a meeting in congo and i got there and the people didn't even know who the guy was really and one guy just came i remember one funny guy just came and just pushed me like that and i just stood i was looking at him he may not remember where jimmy was he looked at the guy later on he was passing a comment about him. I said, ah, can you imagine that this guy just came and was pushed it was later they said ah, that's the joshua selman who's a man of god this and that and that is it not amazing that you are used to being celebrated until you get somewhere they say bros shift <laughs> and you're like Whereas somebody say, my daddy, my, my, my way maker, my, my miracle worker. You think everybody will call you king of kings. Until you get to places where they will not call you king of kings. They will call you Beelzebub. And they will say it to your face. If you don't know this about the world you will die of heart attack you will hate success because the burden will be too much you will say i was better off by myself hallelujah <laughs> now let me tell you the funny part there are people who will now be educated on who you are and say so what you would think people would just know that oh this is pastor alpha this one oh sorry you are the one i've been hearing say, so what well how, well how did you bring bread for me what what did you i beg please i've had the privilege of meeting certain great men and women of god around the airport and a few times especially on my personal trips i've met with them and i've tried to look for a seat just to come and greet them and i've been surprised that some of those who were with them in maybe the lodge or wherever did not even recognize them and can push them and say everything and that person and you sometimes you can see the offense you're like ah, you don't watch tv again you don't know me i don't know you please i'm looking for my let it not surprise you my brothers and my sisters when people disregard you it is part of the things you should expect walking in the world don't carry a celebrity mindset and expect everybody to clap for you. You will meet somebody one day who will look at you and rubbish you head to toe. And if you do not have your intrinsic worth that is a derivative of who you know God has made you to be, you may not bless people again. Growth systems. Is someone growing? One last scripture. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16. You will thank me for the things that you now learn. You will thank me sincerely. Not today. If you thank me today, you do understand what I said. You will thank me when you will need that light in the night. For many of you, this is broad daylight. Just keep it in your archives. 
the night will come when you will be the youngest manager of your corporation and you will need this message you will play it again and cry and say lord thank you for preparing me behold now this one he, he now didn't say you are in the world he said i send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves eat sheep they don't relate they eat sheep when wolves see a sheep they would tear it into pieces because you are a sheep also be a dove be wise as serpents harmless as doves all this is because you are a sheep because you are a sheep become a snake too and become a dove this is an advice being a serpent you are not a serpent you are not a dove borrow the quality of a serpent and a dove to make you a, an effective sheep when a sheep must become a serpent and a dove to survive it's a serious matter jesus is advising you hmm. i send you forth as sheep but your being efficient as a sheep will require you to be both a serpent and a dove Sila. Hmm. you mean i must go that far to be a sheep i must first be a serpent then i become a dove yes sir all because my enemy is a wolf so it takes being a serpent and a dove to overcome a wolf it doesn't take just knowing how to run notice that the serpent is slow the dove is fast all of them are required the serpent looks corny intelligent skill the dove is very innocent many times naive the purity of conscience and yet the serpent is not ignorant at all serpents don't chase you they would disguise you come near they hit you with their venom and let you to die they just watch where you die and then they slowly come to you and swallow you they make sure that they swallow you where they can hide for a long time till you digest you will never catch them you won't see the trace they don't bring blood out of you there is no trace there is no evidence other animals will eat and leave the bones you can trace it back to the mouth and catch it and say you are the one who ate this a serpent will finish you and you will not see anything there and Jesus said, be it to survive. Whoever taught you that just because you are born again, living in the cosmos will just require you to be a nice person. That's why you are not promoted in your office. Because you are a sheep alone. And you stood up before your boss and said, I'm a Christian. I won't collect bribe. I, will, I stand for Jesus. You are right. But you are not a serpent. You are out. There was a way to have done it and you called it boldness but it was not the wisdom that was required there are many believers who have done what they believe to be zeal they have believed they have done many things that looks like standing for christ i remember i had a friend years ago we we're on our way going to just very zealous funny friend and then from nowhere and they were non-christians you know what i'm talking about real fanatics in that car that can almost slaughter you in a moment and we we're somewhere there and i was just praying that we arrive safely and this my friend who is a sheep that cannot be a serpent just shouted praise the lord and then the gentleman began to teach and the way he preached he began to call you know the leader of that religion and all of that and he called this and was insulting the person and insulting and saying a lot of things ah 
there was silence in that car i knew i started thinking of which mystery i know what is the mystery of exemption what is what is the key how did how did how did daniel escape the lions then when you are a sheep without being a serpent and a dove you are in trouble do you know at the end of it sincerely i tell you the truth and i lie not if i'm joking i'll tell you i'm joking they were almost going to pack us in a mosque to slaughter us the driver started chanting something in anger and someone seated in the car too started chanting in anger it's like something you you know what i'm talking about this is an insult this is that and he does not even understand how sir and then when he finished all that sermon he said i have a brother here who will round up with closing prayer me closing prayer Hallelujah. Look up, please. Not every death is dying for Christ. Some deaths are the death of a sheep that cannot be a serpent. It took the grace of God for us to arrive just in peace. And I told myself I will never travel with this guy. I was not afraid of death. It was you I was seeing. Who would teach you? <laughs> Hallelujah. How many missionaries should not have died except for the way they approach their sheep food? There are people who just get up and do things anyhow. Listen. You must understand the cosmos to grow. Many of us know God, but we do not know this system. So the diplomacy to navigate this system, we do not have it. Everybody say understanding the world system. Number three, our time is gone. Goodness. I hope you are still following me. The first is your foundation. Second is understanding the world system. The third is you must understand value. I will rush this. We've dealt with this. I want to be able to reach the fourth one. Understanding value. Please look up. If you want to grow spiritually and otherwise in this world, you must understand that your growth your excelling will be based on your value and your value is divided into two the first is your virtue and then second your skill if all you have is education listen carefully if all you have is certificate and you do not have character you will not rise in this kingdom There are many educated people who will never rise to managerial levels because they lack virtue. They have transactable skills, but they do not have virtue. We have dealt with this extensively in this house, so I'm not going to dwell so much. Maybe let's just look at two scriptures very quickly. Number one, you know Galatians 5.22? You just write that. Then let's read Colossians chapter 3, please. From verse 12, Colossians chapter I really want us to read put on therefore okay and then please prepare first Kings 7 put on therefore look up everybody as the elect of God holy and beloved bowels of mercy kindness humbleness of mind meekness long suffering another word for patience next verse forbearing one another these are virtues that you need to possess to be great and to sit at the zenith the pinnacle of all that god has ordained for you 
If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, also do ye. Next verse. Above all this, put on charity. The Bible calls it the bond of perfectness. Let's stop there. Character. Many people have degrees, but they lack character. You must have solid character. The fruit of the Spirit. To be able to rise. There are people today who are employed because of their degrees, but promoted because of their character. When everybody has what you have, your character is what distinguishes you. It may be one of the reasons why many, many, many graduates do not have jobs. They have the technical skills, but they don't have the character that can back it. You can't trust them. First Kings chapter 7 from verse 13 to 14. Hmm. This scripture blessed me. We are now talking of value in terms of skill. We'll read it together. 13 and 14. Everybody read. And King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram out of Tyre. 14. He was a widow's son. Who cares? But the Bible is telling you something. That the king sent for a man. He started his life as a widow's son of the tribe of Naphtali. And his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass. And he was filled with what? Wisdom and understanding and cunning to work in all works in brass. And he came to King Solomon and wrought all his work. He started as a widow's son. But skill took him to a point where Solomon said, come and work for me. The Bible captured that information. He was a widow's son. His father taught him because his father was a craftsman and died. And although a widow's son, his skill bailed him out now to be in the palace. He didn't look for the king. The king, that means every king is searching. You say nobody is looking for me. It's not true. You are not the kind they are looking for. King Solomon sent for Hiram. He said, come. Prove your skill. Prove your worthiness. Nobody finds a skillful man with character and cannot forego any other excess to keep that person. It's true. Many believers have character but they don't have skill. Character is important. But it's not character that turns products into services. It will take skill. Nobody will bring into their company to come and destroy them. And the only thing you are doing is praying. That's important. But they didn't hire you as a prayer warrior. They hired you to be productive. 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 You can tell them everybody who is stealing in the store. No problem. But what result are you producing? Otherwise, you follow those who stole and, and you go. Your offense is you are not productive. Their offense is that they are thieves. Two of you. The door is open for you to go. Listen to me. Competence will pay you again and again. Let competence be your employer. Give your CV to competence. And it will pay you. You will never go on strike once for the rest of your life. Mediocrity. Mediocrity will always produce beggars. It's a deception. It looks like you are there, but you are not there. Many preachers love God, but they are not skilled. Many business people are not skilled. Listen to me. Many career people are not skilled. Value, your virtue, your character, that's important. But you must be competent. You want kings to eat your food, you must know how to cook food for kings, not men. You want kings to part, and I hope you know that you have not arrived until kings patronize you. The proof you are successful is when you serve kings. The gatekeepers of the mountains. They are the ones who don't ask how much. No. You rise from the realm of everybody asking how much. 
to men who say you are too useful. I won't let you go. Oh, that we'll find men and women here who desire to grow. Listen, please do not let anybody trivialize the place of diligence and competence. Being skillful at something. Be a master at your field. Ministry is not for lazy people. Ministry is not for people who tried everything and failed and just came and just received the anointing. There is a skill even in the dispensing of the anointing. Preaching has a skill. You try it and find out how many people listen to you. Africa, let's wake up. Our incompetence will continue to whip us again and again. We compare ourselves with ourselves. I am better than this. I am better than that. If you get 10 over 100 and you are the highest, you still failed. You are just the highest of the failures. Listen, you must be competent from a global reference. Benchmark yourself globally. Don't benchmark yourself within your territory. Sometimes our territories are so mediocre, we don't have to do much to be that recognized. You're a businessman. Know your craft. Back and forth. You're a career person. Tell yourself you will rise to the best. The confidence that knowing a thing gives you is something only God can help you understand. I've met people who know what they are doing. Boy, there is, there is an aura of favor, a compelling presence that competence brings. Make up your mind that you will not stand at the gate of life and be chewing your finger. No, pay the price. Avoid premature manifestation. Sit down. Get something that even kings will give you a right hand of fellowship. They will say, we are great. But you have seen all of us. We have not seen all of you. Welcome. They will welcome you by themselves. You are a tailor so well. You are a farmer, farm well. You are a public speaker, speak well. You are not the only one there. And you are not going to pay yourself. Respect those who will hear you. Don't talk in a way that only you will understand. Are we together? You are a scholar, don't be lazy. Stretch to the zenith of your profession. Say, I will be competent. Say it. Competence is more than a desire. You must outsource the information that gives you an advantage in your field. You are the best because of the scarcity of what you know. Don't find the things that are general. Find the things only few know. That becomes your edge. Please listen to what I'm telling you. I'm speaking especially to our brothers. You must cause the spirit of laziness and mediocrity from your life. Prayer is no excuse for mediocrity. Mediocres in our world today are those who will beg for bread. And be, they are the ones who will be writing all kinds of stories about successful people. Because of the pain and the effect that other people's success will cause on them. Make up your mind. I vowed a vow unto God that I will never be a preacher that will have to go back and bury my head in shame. Find out what it takes to excel and give your all and give your best. It may take a while. Don't worry. Conquer pain in your life. Do not ever let pain be an interruption to your success. Pain does not kill. Burn the candles if you need to. Listen to me. Burn the candles if you need to. Wake up in the night if you need to. Buy the books. Take the certifications. Go for the trainings. I can cook. For who? Who can pay you? I can sew. For who? I have a hotel. For who? A restaurant. For who? I'm a good preacher. Who can listen to you? 
can men of God listen to you? Or is it only those who want to be born again? I'm a keynote public speaker who can demand you so much that no price of hosting you becomes too much. Listen, you know you are valuable when no amount placed on you becomes an inconvenience. The moment people begin to compare price and you and say, Kai, is this not a bit too much? Is proof that you have plateaued on your value. Step up. There are people that there is no amount to host them that becomes a waste. Their presence is like the presence of God. One hour with them, you must change. You will never be the same. It has nothing to do. Your own is to just make sure you are in contact with them. The excellency of the information they supply you will beat your ignorance to its knees. You will think you are just going to receive one or two things. Oh goodness. In five minutes they will, they will embarrass your pride by making you see how ignorant you are. When you become like such people, Gentiles will come to your light. You hear me challenge you all the time. I will never become a pastor of weak people. I've taught you how to pray and know God, but I want you to be successful. Why must they think about you when they are downsizing? It's a reflection of your value. Be as scarce as gold. The same way people queue in front of a filling station. They are not complaining. The pump does not talk. They need the oil so much. They need the foil. They will stay from morning till night to fill their tanks and pay you and still tell you thank you. May God make you so valuable in the name of Jesus. Preachers be so valuable and you will never beg for bread. Your blessings will come from the people you have raised. You are not raising anybody, there is no bread for the future. Listen to me carefully. You are not raising anybody, there is no bread for the future. There are men of God who are recycling the same kind of knowledge. Those who are growing know where they are getting it from. When they are blessed, they will go there. Raise men. When people complain all around and say, ah, why should you know, people be blessed? Why should a young man be blessed? Why should, what, what are you saying? When you raise people, they become too grateful to ignore you. Please listen to what I'm teaching you. It's important. Don't sit down and ask, how can I rise? It is valuable people who rise. When you become the delight of many, do you not know there is an aura of beauty that value brings upon your life? You become difficult to ignore. People will overlook anything. Be like water. Ah, be like cold water on a sunny day. How far can you ignore that? The water is not what is suffering. The effect of the sun on you will make you say, how much did you say it is? Like 150. Why? Because it's cold. You are wicked, oh boy, you will still buy it. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, make me valuable. Make me valuable, O oh God. Take me out of the rat race of life. I need time to serve you and your purposes. You are showing me the growth systems of the kingdom. Take me out of the realm of competition. Let me rise to a dimension that is incontestable. Lifted by your grace and lifted by understanding. Is someone praying? God is challenging you. That may be why your ministry is not growing. Your call is not what is in doubt. It's not just an impartation you need. You need to grow. It's more than an impartation. Could that be why your business is not growing? It takes more than sincerity. Champions are not ignorant people. Champions do not have little knowledge. Champion have the knowledge that is an endangered species.
make me skillful skillful hallelujah listen before i go to the last place our time is gone but please spare me a few minutes you need what i'm about to share this is the 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 highest discussion of all we are going to be discussing today before i go there let me advise you always check your result against the level you are going not against the levels available when you preach as a man of god listen to your messages again not just to be edified as a sign of humility but also to learn oh the people were following but i can discern that i lost them here okay next time how can i adjust i think there is a psychology to my communication i need to know when the people are tired i need to know when i've exhausted their understanding my creativity is small i need to step up on it please don't be lazy please don't be lazy in the name of jesus sit down in the name of jesus sit down get books right wake up in the night stop snoring your night away sit down and learn buy the truth sell it not god gave you phones go and download or buy apps that can help you sit down burn the candles while you pray and you will watch the gates of your destiny open unhindered by whatever kind of factor you think can hinder it i made a vow to myself that i will not be small i shouldn't stand before kings and be ashamed do your homework and you will not need to be afraid fear is for those who are not prepared a workman that needed not to be ashamed take away the shame that incompetence brings take away from your life the shame that mediocrity brings please receive grace to sit down and do your homework sit down and do your homework are we blessed number four the last key this is so powerful you must understand men let me take you to the world of men and teach you a few things men the fourth key to your growth is the understanding of men you must understand men as a species as an entity please listen god is giving us wisdom now luke chapter 16 the first eight verses nine really but eight we'll just stop at the first eight verses profound wisdom jesus is teaching again the rabbi no wonder he is called he is not only wise remarkably intelligent jesus is teaching us something to understand men are you ready to learn and he said unto his disciples there was a certain rich man which had a steward and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods follow the story next verse and he called him the rich man now called his steward and said unto him how is it that i hear this of thee give account of thy stewardship for thou mayest no longer be a steward he's about to lose a relationship with a wealthy man that's dangerous for him and the steward said within himself what shall i do for my lord take it away from me stewardship i cannot dig and to beg i am ashamed so what's going to be the way next verse i am resolved what to do that when i am put out of the stewardship they may receive me into their houses are we together now follow the story so he called every one of his lord's debtors unto him so you can see the kind of position he was occupying and said unto the first how much owest thou my lord six remember jesus is the one telling us this story and he said an hundred measure of oil and he said unto him take thy bill and sit down quickly and write 50. hi 
Right what? <laughs> and he said to another, How much do you owe? And he said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take your bill and write eighty. And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm glad that I'm not reading from one zodiac book. This is your Bible. You have it. And the children of this world are in their generation. Talk to me. Wiser than the children of light. That's the message. The morale is not his approach. The morale was his. His idea. The method was wrong. The, the wisdom was not how he did it. The wisdom was the fortitude to understand that I'm about to lose something, but I've not lost it if I have relationships. So he said, whatever I can do very quickly, because the secret to my continuity is in the hands of men. If I lose one man and I gain his friends, I still have him. Listen carefully. And he was commended as being wise. His dubious attitude was not the wisdom. The discernment to connect with people and use what is a representation of favor. God told us what to do. The moment you have opportunity, use opportunity to build relationships. You preserve opportunities by investing opportunities in relationships. Listen carefully. You must understand the world of men. Woe betides anybody who does not understand men. Your wealth is stored in men. Your lifting depends on men. Your increase depends on men, not just God. If you know God and you don't know men, you will still stay small. Understand men, growth systems. Let me teach you three dimensions of understanding men very quickly. Number one, learn the expected behaviors for every environment. It's called the law of protocol. You are learning wisdom that will change your life. Some of you will begin to apply it from this night. Every environment has a system of protocol, has an expected behavior. You are not qualified to remain in that environment until you study the protocol of environment. You go to preach in a church, learn the expected behavior. You enter a house, learn the expected behavior. You stand before a great man who can bless you. Before you get to him, understand the protocol. Many believers are ignorant of the expected behavior. And they step into certain circles and step out. There are preachers that have gone to certain churches to preach. And they did not understand the expected behavior. They preach well, but they will never go back to those circles again. Is God blessing us? In Jewish days, when you came to someone's house from a long journey, you were never allowed to enter with a dusty feet. You would stand outside and their way of honoring you was that they had men servants who would come with water and oil and a sponge. They would wash your feet and clean it with toil as a proof of honor. And then you are now authorized to get into um, the place to stay. It's a principle. Many people do not know expected behavior. You meet a wealthy man and they tell you this is a millionaire. And he says, sir, anything for the boys? Sorry, yo. He will give you something, but you lost the relationship. What he gave you will finish. Because you just showed him that what he has is greater than him in your eyes. And he said, you have it and go. Everybody say expected behavior. You can't be going for a job interview and dress as if you are going to a movie theater. There is a persona 
there is a protocol this our ignorant generation we don't have regard for these things you're going to submit a proposal for a business that is worth 100 million naira and you enter with palms and a shirt that is a bit torn and say i'm a free person you are out no right thinking person born of a woman and trained under an intelligence system will host you i've taught you that appearance is the seed for acceptance you minimize controversy when you appear well understanding men i'm teaching you growth systems listen you must understand the diplomacy of managing greatness diplomacy is not compromise you will have the opportunity to stand near great people who will bless you who are not born again they may be vulgar in their communication they may even be sarcastic you can stand near a man as a married woman who is a wealthy um, man but has no regard for family and he can be explicit even in his talk you don't just look at him and say see i'm a child of god i'm a i'm a daughter of zion mm -mm, mm -mm. take it easy take it easy there are some times that your your answer should be with your body not your mouth your body language can speak it's very important i have one of one of the blessings that god gave me is the intelligence to understand atmosphere you must be of quick discernment to understand atmosphere i taught you this um um esther knew the right time to talk there are wives who never receive from their husbands because they don't know when to ask any time is not the right time me, I say my mind, that's how I am. That's why you are, you are where you are. Those who say their mind have all have been receiving a lot of things. Unfavorable, most of them. There were times Jesus kept quiet, even when he had what to say. Then he would say, okay, he who does not have stone, have sin, cast the first stone. There are times that Jesus looks at a man and he's about to leave his crusade to follow one man jesus have you started worshiping men a centurion comes to you and you say no don't worry i know that i'm praying for the rest but i will honor you wow and yet he's no respecter of persons he looks at a short and a little man called zacchaeus who climbs a tree and has a lot of regard for his sacrifice and his honor and he says Zacchaeus you have dishonored yourself too much to honor me please come down it's your house I'm going to I must reciprocate this I want to build a relationship with you there are people whose interest I must protect you represent a gate let's go your house is worth a crusade let's go and Zacchaeus by himself instead of Jesus on the tree saying I will see you but will you forgive this guy he said let's go to your house that honor alone made him say I will forgive these people bank people are very wise sometimes when they want to come and ask you to open an account with them and you are a big person they don't just send you a text they visit you Say, how are you? your birthday? It was yesterday. Say, no, it was last week. Oh, last week. So how are you? How is everything? I mean, uh, the weather is hot. You are wise. Expected behavior. By yourself, you will start asking them, so how is the service? Is it beautiful. We are doing absolutely well. In fact, there's no other time in the history of the bank that we have been this night. You say, you mean it? Yes. In fact, we were hoping since you brought the issue, let's talk. That's why they came home and they are making it look as if it's a side talk many believers are not diplomatic there are times you don't ask by asking you ask by doing what is equivalent to asking oh, 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 oh. your 
your lifting has come. Oh, your lifting has come. Oh, your rising has come. So to understand men, you must understand the protocol of every system. Learn it. I've taught you that adaptation is a proof of honor. Adaptation does not always mean compromise. There are times you have to receive grace to bend, to create positive perceptions. Number two, you want to understand men. Gain mastery over words. Gain mastery over words. Proverbs 16 verse 24. Any man in this generation who does not understand the power of words and how to use it to your advantage, you will destroy yourself and destroy important relationships. Words. Read with me. Proverbs 16 24. One to read. Pleasant words are as an honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Who runs away from this? Pleasantness to your soul, pleasantness to your body. Words. When you, when you watch Scottish films and all of that, the kings had these orators, right? That worked with them in the palace. Every time they had a delegation. I mean, those guys were poets like Shakespeare. They would bamboozle you with intelligence. They would, they would conjure words and just keep you spellbound. And at the end, you see people clapping. And they want to give the king gifts. And they want to honor that nation. Words are powerful. Words convey thoughts. Words create perceptions. Master words. You want to master men, master words. Otherwise, you can make your good be evil spoken of. Words are important. Words are important to great men. They have developed their minds to be philosophical. They analyze words. Mean men don't have value for words. Anything, they don't think. But wealthy people think. You give them a document, they will look at it. Intricately. A poor man will just sign and say, where is the money? A rich man will say, no, 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 no. Why is this clause this way? God calls himself the word. He knows how to speak. He knows what to say for your life to change. Listen to me. Words are very important. Proverbs 18, 20. I have seen people amass fortunes because they have mastered words. A man's belly shall be satisfied not with what he buys in the market. With the fruits of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. There is a relationship between poverty and words. There is a relationship between prosperity and words. And it's not just limited to confession. Understand people. I've taught you this. Always preserve honor in your words. The psychology of communication. That the highest need psychological need of any man on earth i would drum this till you understand is the need to feel loved the need to feel valued the need to feel important never forget that and you will gain the heart of kings i've had the privilege to talk to people on behalf of others and some of those people hitherto had vowed to never provide certain help or certain things. But a five minutes conversation changed their entire minds. And they were more willing to even do the things that they did not want to do. Can you change a man's mind with words? If you cannot, you are not a master of words. Not deception, not lies. That a couple, a marriage that is about to break and you use words to create perceptions in both of them and they are back. 
words translate a man from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God's dear son. Words are that powerful. One word correctly spoken can give you a contract of millions. One word wrongly spoken can destroy you. I'm not just talking about grammatical accuracy. I'm talking about the understanding that words paint pictures. Words create perception. How are you, Pastor Alpha? Ah, well done, huh? Let me touch your small nose. You say you are joking. This is a man you are looking for help from. You intended to crack a joke, but you just lost your job. Words. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I speak like a child. Listen to me. Please master words. Master words. Know how to talk to people. There are times that your communication will require you to be agreeable. There are times that you will need to stand in the position and speak from a position of weakness to be the strong one. There are times you need to be weak to be strong. Strength does not always come as strength. Many times it is weakness that becomes strength. Words. I've taught you a lot of words. Words such as salutation, just greeting people alone. For some of you, you have lost favor because you cannot greet people. You tell everybody how far, including your destiny helper. You enter an office and you are seeing people almost as if they are worshipping a God. And you say, bros, how far? Say, it's the manager. Oh, sorry, manager, how far? And they say, go out. Are you here for the interview? You say, yes, I'm a graduate of... Say, whatever. And while you are talking, go out. Psychology. You match somebody. Sorry, 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 sorry. Words. Words. You thought you just apologized? No. Why do you have to employ MCs and people to conduct a meeting? Why don't just pick somebody and say, come and conduct this wedding? What do the MCs know? Words. Someone who never planned to give 10 naira simply because he was honored. He would stand up and say on behalf of myself and my wife, they agreed on 200,000. He said, we hereby give 1.2. And the wife is looking at him. This, this is kind of honor is not for two. I won't disgrace myself here. You didn't ask him for money. You use words to do something that a charm cannot do to his ATM. Have your words brought you wealth? Have your words brought you open doors? Have your words given you things you didn't work for? Was it not because of what you said that doors closed against you? What you said to God? What you said to man? Daddy, let me tell you something. I've been watching you every day. Just because you are my father, I don't think I respect you. I'm just, you, I will lock you up. Me, yes, your son. And he looks at you and says, no problem. The day somebody comes and says, the Lord is putting it in my heart to help somebody in this house. He said, there's a house help. She just finished her ND help. I said, I thought you have a master's son over my dead body. Rather give me the work in my old age. I've retired, but I will work on contract. I will never watch you give this stupid son work. If he insults me poor, he will kill me when he's rich. Words create memories. Words create memories. When people remember you, it is important for them to remember peace, to remember love. That's why business people go through the rigor of training themselves on how to talk. There are so many business people in this ministry. You people call Ejimi the apostle of wealth. He's the, he's the king, king of the industry. <laughs> I 
you don't sell by intention there is a science to it can I make you like me yes can I make you hate me yes can I make you give to me yes I'm not talking of manipulation there are people who use words like a chain and casted a permit me to use the word spell on people they fish their destiny helpers with words and while they left the helpers followed them what are you doing i'm following you why words a word spoken in due season you may speak good english and speak nonsense psychology words please lend this some of you need to go back and find the five or ten people who have the power to be used by God to change your life start doing something with words uncle just to bless you and to say good evening sir um, it's been a while that I kept in touch I sincerely apologize God has been faithful I honor you thank you so much I know you are busy I will be glad to call whenever you allow me to you see that statement you now look like a fool the man says, ah this man knows I'm busy he will call you by himself you never say instead of uncle how far you are my only uncle what did my father tell you before he died those those kinds of those kinds of statements you will keep authorizing demons and darkness to punish you words are powerful your father and one uncle somewhere is fighting and you are supposed to come in uncle what happened question mark who are you you are a child among the elderly people no good afternoon sir i sincerely hope you are not offended that i'm even reaching you i know i shouldn't be doing this it is in no way to communicate this honor i understand that you and daddy may not have been not fighting may not have been at the best of state and if it will ever make any meaning i'm joining my knees and my hand on the ground to plead for the family i know many of you are embarrassed and say me to subject that's why you are poor that's why you are poor what are you proud of if you don't have what you are looking for what do you think being great is it's a combination of keys let me tell you what will happen the uncle will not reply you that's a proof that he has received what you have said that's how men process things women will respond thank you men don't act like that men think they will delete it because it's already in their mind and think through it wow this young man what can i do for him the day they see you they will act as if you are not the one but one day when the light of god's favor will shine on you they will say i remember when this guy was 14 years old i was having a challenge with the uncle can you imagine that this small boy wrote a nice letter and he said uncle i'm 41 say you think i forgot it they want to sack you from somewhere the uncle will say kill me before you sack this boy listen let me teach you this if you understand words you can be everywhere where you are not your word is there for you are you blessed don't just treat great people treat everybody words Twenty five verse eighteen. I really apologize our time is gone. We are going to round up now. But you will thank me like I said. You may not thank me after the service. Some of you will receive instant testimonies from this. Just this that you understand, man. You've been fired from your workplace and you just construct a letter or a text and sincerely apologize to your boss. And that man is ready to receive you and even promote you. A man that beareth false witness against his neighbor is a maw and a sword and a sharp arrow. Speaking about words. This is what words can do. 
they can be so destructive there are times the, the way to speak is to say nothing that's how you speak hmm. I'm just imagining the results that will come out of your life when you start engaging these things let me tell you there is no power that can stop this from working it's true every man is weak to words when they are right every man including God was it not Moses that said God please please calm down don't let them think that you brought the nation of Israel out and you didn't have the power to take them into the promised land and God repented God repented this looks like small keys but the wonders that these keys work in your life words two minutes the last key to understanding men is understanding the power of endorsement please write it down you will never rise beyond certain levels until a credible voice can endorse you please learn this please learn this endorsements are powerful man of God you remain where you are in spite of the growth of the anointing until a credible voice can speak for you endorsements are powerful you may not have access to the gate so value everyone you know who is already at the gate because their recommendation their referrals their endorsement I may not trust you but I trust the person who spoke about you I have been blessed by the recommendation and the endorsement of people when you see gatekeepers don't ignore them value the endorsement of great men it took a lot of sacrifice for their voices to be heard don't think you will push them aside there are many young preachers who believe they can push any other man of God and just stand and gain a voice keep going save Johnny until you know that men are not that fragile before they listen to you they will look at the person they listen to what does he have to say about you there are many churches before I come they ask questions who knows apostle who has listened to him and then usually one influential person will raise his hand and say ah my son I've not listened to him but I overheard my, my son's life has changed please let that man come immediately every church meeting is over bring apostle you would have been doing business with kings if the right voice spoke to you John had to endorse Jesus he didn't just ordain him he endorsed him if there is nobody who can speak into your life not just in terms of prophesying but to give a good word you can easily get a job when someone speaks for you hello please um i know that they are collecting this this oil company people please uh yes that lady number 76 please she's my daughter eh please 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 don't worry we'll talk later on and that's it you have gotten the job whereas someone else is saying father help me the angel of the lord keeps hovering around his breakthrough but there's no man to use because he ignored every he prayed and his prayer brought angels but he ignored men so there is nobody to speak for him number 24 who knows him nobody please remove him and give number 77 because three people have called for his sake the same thing with men of god do you know it's a terrible thing if you don't have men who can rise for you? I don't mean psychophants. Nobody to defend what you represent. Nobody to stand up and advocate for you. There are parents who don't have anybody speaking for them. The only person who can speak for them is their children. They didn't raise anybody today who can speak for them. 
There are times you are not the one holding the rod, but you can hold the hands of the person holding the rod so that they can speak and say, if you ever need somebody to hold a hand, this person. There are times that I have been called, you may not know, but some of the students who graduate and are serving and NCCF for and all of this. Sometimes I get text messages from the leaders who are interviewing new people. And I, they say, ah, Apostle, please, we interviewed so, so, so. He said he's a member of Koinonia. What do you have to say about him? We are considering making him this, this and that. And sometimes I say, ah, with all pleasure. He was effective. He was useful. That's it. You don't have to know. The same way right now, while you are seated here, the angel of favor is at the ears of your helper. But because you did not connect with them, you didn't leave memories that will compel them to reciprocate kindness. Mm. That you continue to plant yourself in the hearts of people through honor. Plant yourself in the heart of gatekeepers. Everybody who thinks about who to help is thinking about you. You will never go down that way. No. There are people who have eaten from your hands today who will never allow anybody speak evil of you. You have become part of them. Preachers learn this. Business people learn this. We are going to pray. We have stretched you today and I sincerely and truly apologize. But I give you one guarantee. You will see fruitfulness in ways that will surprise you. Please rise up on your feet. One more time and we're done. Make him my, 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 make Praise the Lord. Father, I declare that my life is becoming a testimony of your power, a testimony of your grace, a testimony of your wisdom. Lift your voice and pray. I declare it. My life is a sign and a wonder, a testimony of your power a testimony of your goodness a testimony of your glory I decree and declare my life is a testimony Isaiah 62. Let's keep standing. Isaiah chapter 62. We'll read the first seven verses. And if I were you, I would believe everything we're about to read. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness 
and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth it says and the gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory and thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the lord shall name verse 3 thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of god a royal diadem in the hand of thy god Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. Thou shalt be called Hephzibah, and thy land Beulah, for the Lord delighted in thee, and thy land shall be married. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee and as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride so shall thy god rejoice over thee i have set watchmen upon thy walls o jerusalem which shall never hold their peace day or night he says ye that make mention of the lord keep not silence seven he says and give him no rest till he establish until he makes jerusalem a praise in the earth lift your voice and say father i declare my life must become a testimony i place a demand upon your grace i place a demand upon your power Pray. Give him no rest till he establishes you. Give him no rest till he makes your life a praise in the earth. Shabarakatu Sabradishnera. Lord, we believe your word. We continue to press we continue to press until we become testaments hallelujah one last prayer point and then you'll be seated lord my spirit and my mind is open not just your spirit my spirit man and my mind is open lift your voice and pray i receive illumination Are you praying outside are you praying my spirit is open my mind is open hallelujah praise the lord please be seated spirit of the living god we're here again and we trust the supply of your power we receive spiritual intelligence we receive illumination the bible says true knowledge shall the just be delivered therefore lord we declare by the power of the holy spirit that we are rising from one dimension to the other and tonight oh god our hearts and our minds are opened in the name of jesus christ good evening everybody it matters to god that we grow it doesn't just matter to god alone that we are saved the entire tripartite nature of man must be involved in expressing the victory of christ listen very carefully the entire tripartite nature of man must be involved in expressing the victory of christ your spirit your mind your physical body your life 
the entire three realms in the realm of the spirit the realm of your mind and even in the physical the entire tripartite dimension must be able to successfully communicate the victory of christ if one or more of these realms um, does not successfully communicate the victory of christ you are going to limit the presentation of the power the victory the reality of the victory of christ will not find full expression in our lives therefore we must continue to press listen carefully to make sure that christ is a contention and is a journey to make sure that christ is revealed in every aspect of our lives in the realm of the spirit you are sound spiritually you are growing you are conforming to the image the character of the christ are we together your life is becoming a representation of god you are hosting very superior dimensions of his presence then your mind is enlightened you are sustaining an understanding that is higher far higher than the intelligence of the average human being and then your physical environment all the auxiliary systems that support the fact that you are in christ you are only fruitful in your christian experience when your entire tripartite being participates in revealing the victory of christ if i am sound spiritually and i am anointed but then my mind is barren and unfruitful there is a dimension of god that my life will never be able to present are we together now yes if i am wealthy and i am influential and i have a healthy mind but my spirit is dead there is a dimension of god i will never be able to communicate the lopsidedness in the teaching about the revelation of christ through a man what the bible calls the mystery of godliness is the reason why there's a lot of unfulfillment in our christian experience so it's as though you should select one area where you want christ to be revealed and some selected finances some selected intelligence some selected spiritual health some selected influence some selected career and so everybody just selects and god says no i will never be revealed holy like that the entire tripartite nature of man must participate in revealing all of him if you're with me say amen, amen. so the assignment in building you by the spirit is to make sure that as we continue to press by his grace no aspect of our life is left barren and unfruitful are we together i have said it again and again that the vision for what we are becoming by the spirit of god through these teachings is very clear there is a picture already we are not guessing what we will be like are we together the bible says it does not yet appear what we shall be like but then christ has already exemplified all that we should become so we continue as we behold him as in a mirror the bible says there is a change a metamorphosis like an insect transits from egg lava pupa to the adult that's what is happening to us so never mind the fact that certain aspects of your life have not yet conformed don't worry your job is to be consistent and watch the wonder working power of the spirit A woman's assignment is to be pregnant the dynamics of the growth of the child leave it to god every day she just knows that there's something in my stomach whether she can feel it or not and then at a point she starts sensing that look this child is becoming real and then nine months later she gives birth to a healthy baby imagine that the woman gets worried and is wondering what part of him is growing now is it the leg or the head you are going to stress yourself a system has already been designed in you when your part is played god's part kicks in immediately so it's not everything that you need to know 
there are things that you need to know you don't need to know everything but the part you should know if you don't know it it will make god look unfruitful in your life hallelujah as we prepare for our retreat i'm very excited about the weekend because for for us it's a time it's a time when our lives will never never be the same i really believe it's the first time we're having two day stretch retreat usually one day will be for the leaders and then everybody but the kind of information you are about to receive cannot be passed in one day you need to sit down and get this thing i prayed to god and i prayed for you i said lord they must get it they must get it when you get it it shows you said that which we have seen that which we have heard that which our hands have handled you can doubt what you hear sometimes you can even doubt what you see but what your hands have handled now it's too real to doubt it hallelujah praise the lord tonight's teaching is a response um many times i'm led by the spirit to just bring teachings that attempt to respond to the issues around the lives of people as revealed to me by the spirit or sometimes it may not directly be a revelation it may just be that when i i examine the kinds of questions and the communication of the frustration of people as they send text messages and once i find out that a people continually need clarity over certain aspects then i know that is a sign that i should commit myself in bringing them enlightenment and i think that recently one of the areas that i would say a lot of people have had it's a growing frustration is why the victory in christ the success that the bible says should follow a believer on account of knowledge partnership with the holy spirit and obedience what is really hindering the manifestation listen tonight's teaching is very powerful very very powerful because we know that for as long as realities are locked up in the spirit ephesians chapter 1 the bible says blessed be the god of our father you know our lord and father jesus christ who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ so we are not in doubt over the fact that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ so we are blessed everybody say i am blessed that is a fact the bible declares it number two the bible tells us that we are blessed with blessings are we together now and the bible tells us that those blessings are spiritual in context when the bible tells you a thing is spiritual that means that you may not be able to use your sensory perceptions to confirm its presence it is locked up in a dimension that is higher than the three-dimensional realm listen very carefully and then number three the bible says it is in heavenly places that is where these realities are domiciled now follow me very carefully so we are blessed with all blessings how many all blessings all blessings this is the revelation of what grace is grace is any and everything only god can produce it's not just unmerited access any spiritual reality at all that can only be birthed and communicated by the christ and in the christ is called grace anointing is grace the wisdom of god is grace the peace that surpasses all understanding is grace are we together righteousness is grace mercy is grace 
every constituent that only the Christ can produce is called grace. Please listen. You have to understand this. I define grace as every good and perfect gift that comes from above. So spiritual blessings from above heavenly places but routed only in Christ. Now the difference between grace and every other thing is that grace can only be obtained in Christ. An angel cannot be the basis for grace. Are we together now? Yes. Christ is the epicenter. Listen carefully. Now grace is very powerful when it is taught correctly. That means if grace cannot if that reality is not captured in the Christ, you don't there's no point seeking it. It's not available. So before you ever begin to think of the possibility of receiving and working in any reality, your first assignment is to find out whether the grace of God has made that reality available. And the way you know is to find out whether the Christ, his person, Jesus, the door, does he lead you to that possibility? Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am life. He said many things about himself. He also said, I am the door. Not just the good shepherd. Not just the bread. Are we together now? So the grace of God is the basis for availability of anything. The grace of God has in it the possibility for a man to be anointed. That is why we can press for the anointing. The grace of God makes his prosperity available. The grace of God makes his righteousness available. Listen, the grace of God makes access into the mind of God, access into the gifts of the Spirit available. This is the correct and balanced communication of grace. So you approach the grace of God as a summation, the holistic picture of every spiritual privilege that only the office of the Christ can provide. You cannot route the grace of God through any other formula. That does not mean you cannot receive through any other formula. You can. But if it must be by grace, it has to be in Christ. <laughs> he had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places so we are no longer in confusion as to the fact that we are blessed listen we just finished a series on spiritual stability and the goal was to help our convictions to be unbending meaning if anyone gets up now no matter how well meaning and indoctrinates you and makes you feel like there is nothing in store for you in christ you will respectfully know that as powerful as this is is an error because the bible declare that he had blessed us with all spiritual blessings now the next question becomes why then because you see listen i hope you know that you are intrinsically a spirit this is very basic tonight but don't trivialize it at all say i am a spirit not i have a spirit if you say you have a spirit you are wrong you are a spirit are we together now yes that spirit is domiciled in a body according to the law of territory if you are in the realm of the spirit you don't need a physical body are we together your spirit body is sufficient for the spiritual climate but if you are in this physical realm it was so designed that you must have a material body not necessarily a mortal body but a material body a body that is made out of the material of the earth so that you can be compatible with the environment that's why god made man from the elements of the earth when bible says god made man from the dust is a generic statement it doesn't mean god used mud it means he sourced the instrument of our physical configuration from the same elements so you can look at man and see similitudes of the things in man in creation for instance the bones of man are in the similitude of rocks that's why they don't decay a man can die and his bones can be there for a thousand years just like a rock can remain you see the hair of man you see it in the similitude of grass you can cut grass it can grow back your hair 
so it means god made man he sourced the material for your physical frame from the environment that's why the environment should not hurt you because you are compatible if your environment hurts you then it means something else is playing out are you getting what i'm saying now it's called the law of territory so when the word wanted to become flesh he needed to come in the similitude of a material body that was compatible to the territory where he was going to come and die if jesus was going to die in venus the planet venus he would find out thank god he is the wisdom of god he would have to reconfigure himself in the similitude of that that's the reason why when angels every time angels were to come to the earth they would either remain in the realm of the spirit and by the supply of the spirit they cause the eye of an individual on earth who is also a spirit to see beyond the three-dimensional realm then the angel can now communicate to you are we together now or the angel assumes a material body is a privilege that the angels have they can translate themselves and assume bodies and then come into your realm and at that point you will not need to see a vision again they can walk like you you can now use your natural eyes you can never see spiritual things with your natural eyes now if you think you saw it with your natural eyes it's just the interpretation of your mind i hope you know that you you don't see with your eyes <laughs> look at this shut down a man's brain keep his eyes open will he be seen you see through your eyes you see your eyes is the window that your spirit looks through but what processes that image is not this that's why if you read in the book of acts paul was blind yet he was still seeing visions that's why blind people can still be productive because what is responsible for imagery is not the eyes is the mind Are we together now so the bible tells us that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places but the challenge now is that as you've always heard me say it here whilst it is true that we do not seek god because of tea and bread and money and fame and prestige all of these things are not and never will be the basis of loving and seeking god but god so designed this kingdom such that as you genuinely seek him listen very carefully all of these privileges and these blessings because remember he designed them and he designed them to be the support system for your serving him is that true that means that i will serve god effectively if i say i design something to support you it means that you may you may not necessarily die without it but you will not be effective without it are we together now many believers are getting frustrated and this is the reason my message starts now they are aware because this is the word of god that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places but the frustration is beginning to grow how long do i have to wait how do i know whether something is faith or demonic or that i'm not obeying something because it looks like the time that we are waiting for that which has been resident in heavenly places to find expression when a woman gets pregnant she doesn't expect to give birth in two weeks but she also doesn't expect to be pregnant forever is that true she knows that there is a period of conception and she gladly she may not know the particular day the doctors can approximate intelligently but she knows it is around a season that my edd is on the 14th of september plus or minus the doctors will give 
14th of September cannot be 6th of March. That is demonic. Are we together? That's too far. So there is a time period. There is an approximation. That is the same way with a believer. Meaning when you start your journey. This is you now. You are starting your journey. You should be able to complete. You should be able to know that, okay, by the time I get here, what should have been possible in my life? Everything may not yet experientially be manifest, but there should be what I call a token, a consolation, something that motivates you that I got it right. Okay, I started five years ago, praying in tongues one hour every day, reading my Bible five chapters every day, reading my Munro's book. After five years, I should be able to look back and there has to be an evidence in my life. It encourages me to know that the ones that have not manifest, I'm getting there. But when your life becomes Ichabod, that everything at all, spiritually, even if there's nothing materially, let there be spiritual intelligence. Let there be the anointing. Praying one hour every day for five years to the same God of heaven. And not one sick person has been healed through your hands and not i mean you have not seen any clear dream that came to pass at that point you know that something is wrong are we together many believers are now wondering then your spirit man receives that thing you are doing well spiritually everybody who looks at you knows that you are on fire but then relative to what god has shown you you find out that it looks like certain things are not happening then you are taught that you need your mind to catch up now and get involved in the process are we together when you start working with god your mind doesn't necessarily need to actively follow are we together now you you can't get someone born again and you are teaching him principles of excellence and this and that that's that's too that's too unneeded for that level when people get born again they are exposed to fire principles of prayer how to study the word understanding the foundations of righteousness are we together repentance from dead works they need to understand the redemptive work of christ they need to be introduced to the person of the holy spirit the value of corporate gathering are we together all of these foundational things they have to be involved but then eventually now you are in need your child is in need and now your mind comes in so you start renewing your mind by the strategic communication of god's word but then you get to a point where your physical environment is desperately in need of the manifestation of those spiritual blessings this is where my teaching is now the barrenness of god being represented in your physical life you may laugh because of the consolation you are receiving from your spirit man and the fact that your mind is now catching up but sooner or later the reality of time will start demanding god to be manifest in your physical life not just your spirit alone the vicissitudes of life will now begin to compel you to need to translate those spiritual realities into a context that is applicable to your physical life otherwise you will be surprised to find out that a boomerang begins to happen that the challenge that now obstruct your spirit life will start from the natural realm physically are we together yes so this gentleman has not eaten and he's surprised that he can't pray the realm of the spirit is affected by something that is happening here he's standing and he's watching two of his kids they are driving them from school and he cannot pay and when he started with god the issue of finances was not an issue but at this point as a father of two you can't ignore it are we together and he's getting frustrated when he started ministry everybody used to meet under a tree so there was no need for bench and mat if you fell down you fell on the grass but he took it a step further and he opened a church are we together and now you don't sit on the floor in a church and he just realized that they need to buy chairs and he just realized that in that church people will get married one day 
and that means the reality of family life their well-being that if the families are not doing well no matter how anointed he is very soon there will be empty pews now this guy is is there is a need for the revelation of christ to find expression not just in the spirit realm not just in the realm of the mind but also in the physical this is where many of us are now apostle the bible says great is the mystery of godliness that christ was manifest in the flesh listen he appeared to men he appeared to angels the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory you only behold that glory when it dwells among you are we together even the glory of the father and the bible says is full of grace and truth so i want to help us tonight to show us because let me tell you let me give you a very kind advice never allow your personal frustration make you doubt the validity of kingdom laws never allow your personal frustration i know this is very painful you are you are far from receiving the help of god when you take your personal frustration and create a vendetta between you and god from it and say lord as far as i'm concerned i'm doing what should be done why are things not working now many times the mistake is never from god a gentleman sent me a text today probably he's following and he was going to commit suicide by this night i don't mean this play play i'll kill myself he really was going to do it there's how you know that somebody means business with suicide the kind of dreams he's having the, somebody cannot just wake up and say i want to kill myself he's just looking for help but there, there are things that can lead to you know that this person will actually kill himself and i was telling him i said no no you don't have to kill yourself and the person says usually this is it I have done everything I know to do or I have done everything koinonia teaching says to do or I have done everything my pastor or the Word of God says to do I'm going to make some very audacious statements tonight and I hope it doesn't offend you if it does not work you are missing something the systems of the kingdom are so flawless if you really get it your life will wonder and marvel at the results that will come now this is an, an uncomfortable truth but i want us to please for god's sake humble ourselves tonight and just lend me your attention that if something is not working in my life and your life there is something you know have you seen a learner learning how to drive and then the learner is surprised why is this car moving that way i thought you said i should talk i'm doing my best he thinks based on his mind that he's doing his best but the professional knows what is wrong and the learner will argue and say this and that and that no i don't i don't believe it i don't do this and that and that when i started marking student scripts a school of ministry students that's when i knew that many students that say they gave me are talking nonsense <laughs> they gave me five they gave me ten as that's for for in for many of it is is complete nonsense at least i'm honest i'm born again and godly and i'm the one that is doing the marking from a very unbiased perspective and i'm surprised ah if you wrote this you should be joking to expect to pass now but you ask the person who wrote it i'm just using that as an example you ask the pe just because he read and just because he wrote you can do a mathematical calculation and be wrong but just because your wrong answer is part of the answers and you got it doesn't mean you passed the answer to the question may be five but your wrong calculation gave you two and option a is two and you say i got it no you didn't get it you just found your error as part of the options are we following 
I don't want to live my life doubting the things I believe. I don't want to get to a point in my life where it becomes too late to be accurate. So I want to walk with you in a few minutes and I want by the grace of God I think for many of us I know what is wrong. And I want to show you this night. And I want you to listen. Because I'm speaking to people who are largely spiritually enlightened. So what is wrong? You will be surprised to know that the same frustration many of you are having, I had it too. Because I believe with all my heart that I was getting everything right. But looking from today's standpoint, <laughs> it was a joke. I even wonder how I can see the gaps that the mercy of God covered. Outstanding success has a huge price. Write it down. For someone, this is already a deliverance. Because you believe that success, just because the Bible says he has given us all things, just because the Bible says the primary reason why many believers never succeed, whether in ministry or in whatever area of life, among other things is they misunderstand how spiritual things are both communicated and translated the idea of spiritual things being an inheritance in christ that word if not well explained can mislead you and make you fail now the bible is saying i have been given all things if i have been given it means my next and only assignment based on this is to receive and you are not wrong but the system of reception is every other thing i will be saying for many people we think to receive just means to verbalize by faith i receive you see it now but that's incomplete the same way the system of god giving you this you see the bible speaks from different angles and different dimensions and so when you are interpreting scripture you have to first understand the context what was the subject matter that was being addressed because it will help you know why certain expressions were used when paul in his pauline epistle is teaching them on revelations of redemption you notice that his communications was uh, they were always from a standpoint of the finished work of christ you will never see in Paul's context his exegesis on redemption. He does not ever give you any idea that there's anything to be done. So he lets you know that you are starting from a position of victory. And that is correct. With respect to your understanding of redemptive realities. But now you switch to the other dimension which is coming into the experience of the kingdom. And Paul begins to change his communication it is not a he's not counteracting himself he is now showing you why should i want to press to enter something that is an inheritance so paul gets to the book of hebrews and paul now surprises us and even confuses many that in spite of the fact that you have been given this he said there remained a rest for the people of god are we together now he now begins to talk of the sabbath of the church and the sabbath of a man's destiny that until now there is still a rest that means until today men have not entered into the experience of this and he says today if you hear his voice he says do not harden your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness is that true and then the bible now begins to tell us that he heard the word just like we did but the word did not profit them and he now introduces something strange he said not mixed a Jimmy's wife is a professional baker the word mix doesn't mean to talk it means it involves action it involves process when you mix something you combine factors together and the bible said not mix with faith faith is part of the many things that should be mixed not mixed with faith like you say you didn't add salt to the food the food is not salt there were many other things before salt arrived 
but for the taste you are looking for salt is the ingredient that must be added not mixed with faith in them that heard it and so many people are unable to translate these realities into their lives success has a huge price it truly is very costly the earlier you got this the better for you settle it once and for all that the birth of anything valuable is painful number two like i will always say failure too has a huge price tag many people don't know that it's not easy to fail they think it's very easy to fail if there is a price to produce the results that we need what is that price i'm not going to be talking of many of them i'm just going to mention one that i believe with all my heart that many people are not doing is the price of diligence write it down and listen very carefully please don't assume you understand what i'm saying the price of diligence proverbs 14 verse 23 read it for me if you are a serious christian one two read please but the talk of the lips only does what in all labor there is profit but the talk of the lips only will tend a man to penury there is a dimension of entering into your rest that requires labor requires diligence diligence is a trait that all successful people whether in ministry in business have many believers are busy many believers are taking action but they are not diligent write this down diligence is the quality of being productive write it down diligence is the quality of being strategic diligence is the quality of being resilient unbending the refusal to bow out diligence is the quality of endurance please listen to me in africa i don't know if it's a social cultural context but we have a very funny understanding about success we have all kinds of mentalities about success that are wrong in themselves but i think probably the worst of them all is how much we trivialize success to believe that god or government or parents or mother nature owes us are being successful or we just feel i may just put my hands here and there and then with just a prophetic word or just a blessing or just a, a a little oil on it everything just works diligence is not just hard work notice my choice of words you must be strategic you must be productive listen diligence involves the sacrifice of your time diligence involves the sacrifice of your energy diligence involves the sacrifice of your resources the sacrifice of your time write it down <laughs> ah, 
blessed be the name of the lord may god open our eyes tonight look at me let me teach you something everybody say time is money say it again you've heard it every time but what does it mean what does it mean by time is money that means that you are only rewarded when you create an event that makes men to have time for it listen come pastor lawrence and your lovely wife i was happy to see you people just celebrate them come come quickly come stand here don't be embarrassed thank god you're a pastor look at this how many of you know that last year we didn't have time for their wedding because the event was not yet created any time an event has not been created in the earth realm there is no time for it that means you cannot commit any resources towards it because there is no time for it both of them decided when did you marry what's the date 15th now they they decided to bring time and attach an event to 15 september the moment they took the risk to create an event people started having time for them and resources started coming to them now that the event has been achieved nobody will give you money for marriage again because there is no longer time for it listen listen by 1990 there was no time for zuckerberg there was no time for facebook because that product was not created there was no event that will make you have time for facebook so a gentleman said let me make men have time and with that time will come resources and he made available an event and now we have time for facebook there was no time for koinonia before koinonia started your friday night were for something else the moment there was a vision that vision brought time to it and with that time every resource came is that true so when you say time is money time is not necessarily directly money time is only money when an event a creativity was added and attached to that time it will now make men to have time for you and with that time it will make them to have their resources so when you pay zuckerberg you are not paying him for the product necessarily you are really paying for the price he has paid to make you have time for that thing are we together now now you all have time for browsing once upon a time you could not do that on your phone somebody made that possibility with that time now goes your data your data will finish and you want to invest it when you pay data what are you really paying think well what are you paying time when you pay for a venue and they say from 12 o'clock to 6 is 60,000 what did you pay for if they give you a job and they say from eight to six you are working what are you really paying for if you take away time on earth nobody will pay anybody for anything again are you getting what i'm saying now so there is an event and then men begin to invest in this and now they are married god bless you thank you Ask him what it took to create that time. <laughs> he summarized it in one sentence. It is not. I said, that's my message. <laughs> now, but is he married or not? Please talk. You are laughing, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. Is he married or not? Did the devil stop it? But it is not. 24 hours to your wedding there's no reception oh god take my shame that's 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 labor there it's labor in prayer and faith it's not just an activity in all labor 
there is profit. <laughs> Goodness. It takes diligence. Please sit down. Sit down, Pastor. If you are not diligent, listen very carefully, my brothers and my sisters. There is nothing you will ever do and achieve in life if you neglect diligence. There are many, many men of God. For instance, I was listening to Bishop Oedeko's um, lecture at, at Benson Idahosa, the university there, commemorating um, Mama Idahosa's birthday. And I mean, that, that great man of God at that age was just crying out his life. Many people believe life is so cheap. They just think just because there is the anointing that can accelerate a factor. They believe that the anointing is a basis for laziness and lack of diligence. Many of us here, the missing ingredient is that we are not diligent. Diligence does not mean you are not moving you are not moving strategically you are just busy around trying to hustle what business are you doing oh yeah let me join now what are you doing let me just apply i will apply everywhere by faith you believe that what you are doing uh -uh. let me show you something luke chapter 14 please let's read two verses 28 and 29 i hope god is talking to someone luke chapter 14 28 please Luke chapter 14, 28. Read with me, Koinonia. One to read. For which of you intending to build a tower? Hold on. So you, you have an intention. You have a vision. You have a goal. But the Bible says the first thing you do is not to go and buy cement. The first thing you do is to do what? Sit down. And then count the cost. Whether you have sufficient to not start it. Finish it. You can know you have what it takes to finish it before you start. Otherwise, the Bible will not talk about it here. You can know that I have capacity to finish this vision. Next verse. Less happily, after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. In fact, let's, let's read the next verse. Saying, this man began to build, continue till I ask you to stop, and was not able to finish. Remember, we're talking of completion here, finishing. Next verse. Or what king going to make war against another king, seated not down first, and consulted whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000? Are we together? That you become strategic about your life. Not just to take action. Many young people pray in tongues. They fast dry. As soon as they are done, they just get up. Just because the Holy Spirit told them, do A and B. They just get up foolishly. They, there is no, they, they don't have that strategic approach to life. A man comes with his wife. Look at this. You are married to your wife and you are acting as if how will the finances be run? The spirit of God is faithful. Is it not in this life? You are not diligent. Let's pray. Wonderful. But you are not diligent. There is no planning. There is no strategic approach. Are we together? You have real issues that need to be dealt with. But you just find a way of spiritualizing it and throw everything. Faith is not foolishness. You are sitting down. Let me show you diligence. How much do we have now? 20,000 per month. How much do you need? 200,000 per month. We are, we are far from the goal, but at least we are aware of what we have. The miracle comes when you know what you have first. Remember, what you have in your house is already a sign that you are about to receive a miracle. Are we together? Yes. If you have 20,000 naira in your house, and you are a pastor that means there's no organizing conference <laughs> there's no organizing any breakthrough service in the name of any hilarious vision we are not diligent and we're not strategic how many pastors are consistently in debt 
because they continue to organize conferences borrowing money and they tell you it's god that did it and they wept themselves in a lot of shame and reproach you borrow one million invite five men of god who come for four now you think that just because it is spiritual you are not strategic about your life you will never prosper and you will not do well that way are we together a man is starting a ministry and all no members there's no track record of loyalty and you go and rent a venue where you are paying hundred thousand per month or per week believers if you don't listen to what i'm telling you you will be surprised that your life is not making progress a tongue-talking born-again believer is receiving salary of fifty thousand you will find him in zaria suya spot he will buy five chicken one for apostle what you think just because you are buying for apostle means you are you are not diligent if one chicken is say three thousand and you buy five fifteen thousand what percentage of your salary is that all of a sudden you will find out two months later on that you forgot that your child's school fees is coming is it not funny how people forget they have children and then two weeks to resumption or three days they'll say ah sorry you i didn't for where is the pta letter you are not diligent it's not about having money or not having money the same way people come to church when they now say time for offering they are surprised you are not diligent you are not strategic about your life you just stand and guess while the offering is coming quickly you just touch your pocket bring out everything and drop it you are not intentional about life i tell you why many things are not working for us we are praying we are happy but we are not getting the level and the kind of productivity that should be done i have prayed i fasted but i took out time the entire retreat i'm not just going as the spirit leads there is something intentional to be inculcated in the people and because of that it demanded two days it's not god that told me two days the wisdom of the world and the level of investment i seek to produce in your life in these two days necessitate two days of training the first dimension of being diligent is not hard work is being strategic being strategic helps your energy to be worth it many of us are dissipating energy but we are shadow boxing apostle it's not like i'm sitting down i'm moving i'm doing something what are you doing have you thought about what you are doing there are people who can start 10 businesses in one month it's a sign that they are not diligent they were not strategic over what they are doing i just want to do something i want to get my hand doing something you are just hard working you are not diligent a diligent person will sit down you will look at your lifestyle you will look at your goals and your vision you will look at what capital you have the knowledge the level of knowledge you have you look at that business relative to your service relative to your life as a workforce person you look at every other factor how long do i want to do this business is it just to help me get capital for something bigger or this is a line of interest i seek to pursue there's no diligence that's why there is no sustainability in the things we do we just jump at whatever we hear is happening and do you know let me tell you this when you when you continue failing for a long time you will stop believing yourself i've seen a lot of pastors men and women of god very anointed people but they come to me and say apostle why, why, why is my life like this and i look at them i say do you know sometimes they can even tell me as i'm talking to you now i'm on a dry fast three days you know three days dry fast is not easy try it three days fasting itself is, is but dry when dry means no water no nothing and the person is you are seeing the spiritual sacrifice and the person is saying i thought this thing comes by it and you are saying no let me tell you what you are doing wrong i will not become your member there are many things you don't know you are not diligent the man who tells you he wants members has not sat down to really think of what it means to be a pastor over members 
he's not planned it ask him have you done your homework to one those members he says i can preach by the grace of god i'm anointed i'm a mighty prophet i'm an apostle of god is that all it takes to run a church are you seeing that now a lot has not happened we ignore all of these things and then he sees and says oh one day we will take the nations in the name of jesus according to my vision i saw doors opening uh-huh what do you think will happen so we just sit down feel like uh let's do a conference light and glory prophetic encounter season one you start now i'm not being sarcastic you just sat down and thought okay what is this conference supposed to do to my members what is it supposed to do relative to their spiritual level relative to the level of ministry relative to our finances i'm bringing one guest minister from ghana i'm bringing one guest minister from london i'm adding apostle joshua selman from it what is your budget for the conference two million what is your entire church offering for a year five hundred thousand god is faithful you see that that is already a recipe for a struggling pastor forever i don't care what kind of tongues he prays there are many believers that don't have plan to one day have their own house you see it in their life show me your notebook under god that i know that i'm in one small room but i'm already planning and these are the steps i am being strategic let me tell you this i stand before the god of heaven come ejimi be my witness there is nothing you see being done in koinonia today that i did not say will happen he will tell you nothing absolutely nothing i can bring notebooks for you and show you where i wrote these things and i wrote everything that will be done when koinonia was going to start i told you that i saw cgc bigger than this it was small but i saw it expand it's not just vision so we began to prepare when the lord showed me that nations were going to come and all of these things i sat down i said it takes a lot i studied the seven largest churches in every continent of the world it's not just prayer and fasting alone you have to be strategic at a particular level of ministry that i get to i may not be outside on a bike again somebody will embarrass me will i have the financial level at that time to at least have a car what if koinonia needs to run gen 24 hours these are things thank you sir thank you so much these are things that many people never plan for you just sit down and say let's have another baby and god is watching you say you you i did you hear yourself let's have another baby you see nigerians and africa we continue to punish ourselves and we continue to make a fool of god because we are not strategic the baby comes and the man does not know what to do they are confused and he's angry you are the stupid woman why didn't you advise me when i said let's have a baby say is it my fault and, and all of and the baby who is innocent there is watching and saying well, so what is, what is going on now what are you going to do with me Oh, 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 my help has come. Oh, 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 my help has come. Listen, I will never forget the first time in my life I started seeing a strange manifestation of the Holy Spirit. It was during our second crusade. I remember going to minister in a church that was the first time i would mention people's names and see them run out by the anointing like i mentioned your name and you run out i said what is this i've never seen this the signs don't go before the signs don't go with they follow you listen many of us believers let me teach you you are in a season right now where your failure does not mean god is not speaking are you hearing what i'm saying please listen very carefully the fact that you may not get it right physically does not mean the anointing is not on you 
the fact that you did the business and it failed does not mean that kingdom financing anointing is not on you the fact that you preached and your message looked like nonsense all the revelations you gathered evaporated is not demonic it's a track record go through it and see what you will make out of your life you pray for the first person he's not healed say lord while i'm learning what i did wrong who will i pray for again and god will say there is a cancer patient stage four in shika i say lord this is too much don't embarrass me like that and god says well it's up to you you can choose to disobey me when you look at that cancer patient even you by yourself you you'll be afraid what did you come to do here i i, I came to pray god sent me now i was and he said oh yeah pray let's see as soon as you pray on your way going out you see that the person has died they say if if you are not careful we will arrest you and you go back and say god what did i do is it not the call and god says no son you continue i am birthing a mighty healing ministry to you a day will come listen a day will come in and through your life is no longer the issue of who is healed or who is not healed again your ego has been so strong it's now about obedience not results that is the day you will Pass somebody on a wheelchair and he will get up you didn't plan the idea was not to pray for the sick but you had gotten to a point in the spirit where you are not an amateur again this is how God builds this man that you see my goodness I can't begin to tell you about my failures you think it's every message I preached that was impressive no what you see today is a track record of many years man of god i bring you a word of hope don't let any man despise you you know sometimes we men of god we have a way of intimidating especially younger people and we make them look like there's no hope for you it's a lie if god brought me where i am there is nobody that cannot rise with greater fire and grace don't fake visions if you are not seeing it be patient you can see a real vision start where you are and be patient take the risk you will make mistakes not you may you will but don't allow it dampen you you have to believe in your destiny enough to know apostle look at what i'm doing my life is empty god where are you uh -uh. Uh -uh. you may think that you had a revelation that this guy is your husband this girl is your husband you go and meet her and say sorry i'm engaged and you go back and say god but you spoke to me he says no problem you are learning how to hear you are learning spiritual precision a day will come you will be a master and your voice will be like the voice of god upon the earth and when they look at you remember remember brothers and sisters little samuel too had a problem when he was hearing god the man whose word never fell to the ground a day came he said is it god or not god eli i'm not sure the bible captures the story of his learning but now look at samuel a man like a god upon the earth another man looks at him and his donkey starts going back home what changed a track record of consistency are you ready to pray diligence Add diligence to everything that has happened an unbending resilience lord you have called me into the worship ministry even if nobody invites me i will continue writing songs lord they may not place a demand on my grace but i will continue i will give my best to it i will pay the price brothers and sisters i guarantee you this that looks like a simple message if you pay attention tonight you will wear life out until the gate is open for you lift your voice and begin to blast in the pray in the spirit for a few minutes my hand has come my help has come
this is now. But I continue to create the track record. The call is sure. My brother, hear me. Don't doubt your call. Don't doubt your anointing. Don't just use the results to validate that you are called. Yes, you are called. There is destiny upon you. And the nations will hear your voice. You may not have all the results now. But be patient. Be strategic. Be sacrificial. Be resilient. Please pray. He was not strategic. God took him. God did not take away the assignment. God showed him how he would do it. It will be by a rod, not a knife. Moses, you are called, but you are using the wrong tools. Some of you, you are called, but the tools you are using is why you are failing. You are called into business, but the tools you are using, you are called into ministry, but how you were mentored is why things are not working. The information given to you, it is true that you are a deliverer. You are called into the prophetic, but the way they taught you the prophetic is why it looks like divination. You were called into wealth and abundance, but the person who mentored you may have been a greedy person, and he made it look like the call to kingdom wealth is a call to materialism lord correct my strategy lift your voice and pray correct my strategy something is wrong not with the vision not with the assignment the strategy may be wrong lord correct my strategy there is a way i'm doing ministry that's why i'm not getting results it's not the call it's the strategy pray this prayer lord correct my prayer strategy correct my bible study strategy Correct my leadership strategy. Correct my strategy. The assignment is correct, but the approach is wrong. Lord, I'm missing something. I know I'm missing something. Please pray tonight. Why is my church not growing? Why is my ministry not growing? Lord, I don't doubt the call, but I doubt the strategy. Correct the strategy. Listen. Listen. Please look up, everyone. Hear me. Tonight's meeting is very powerful. For many of you, you don't need to correct the vision. You don't need to correct the assignment. You are right. But the strategy is what is making the result to not come. The business you are in is correct. But the strategy, the ministry is correct. But the strategy, you were not supposed to have a church. 
it was an evangelical outfit you went to open a church now nobody is bringing money for cheers let me tell you you are not free till the pattern is given to you the pattern is the strategy it says go and fill seven vessels with water that was the strategy go around jericho that was the strategy walk on water is not enough to want a miracle lord reveal the strategy for my result for my result result in ministry result in my spiritual life lift your voice and pray reveal the strategy reveal the strategy Hallelujah. Look up, please. We'll soon be done. I want us to pray over our finances. Look at me. Many of us here, this is where we really need God to come in. God has blessed you with all blessings. Right now, there are many of us, there's not much you can do with your finances. You are going to say, Lord, open my eyes where is my strategy not our strategy where is my strategy for ministry how do i finance ministry how do i finance my business lord i'm about to get married lord i'm married with three children what is the strategy lift up your voice and pray show me oh god Financial exploit comes with a solid strategy. Your ministry will never be financed until you receive a strategy. Your life and destiny may never be adequately financed until you receive a strategy. What is the blueprint of God? Please pray for Ionia. Don't take lightly this prayer. Hallelujah. Listen, please look at me. When it was time to cross the Red Sea, the strategy for Moses was take your rod, stretch it, the river parted, the ground lifted. When it was time for Joshua to lead the people through, listen, the strategy was that the, the, I think the, the, the priests, the, the, the Levites or so, went in front and then the Jordan parted. When it was time for Jesus, the strategy was not to part the water. You would die there waiting for water to part, whereas the strategy has changed. The fact that God is not doing something the way he did it yesterday doesn't mean he's, the, he's not the one doing it. Give us this day my strategy give me this day lord the strategy that started ministry from zero to hundred i've exhausted it what is the strategy from hundred to one thousand what is the strategy lord the strategy for my finances as a bachelor as a spinster i received it but now i'm married with three children what is the updated strategy for my daily bread Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone met me last week, a dear lovely man of God that I love so much. And he called, he said, Apostle, how are you doing it? You have been transporting people since Koinonia started. You are doing all of these things. You don't raise money. You don't do anything. You don't cajole. You don't invite preachers to raise. How do you do it? 
and I looked at him I said my brother you must stay with God not just to understand the call many of us once you get the call you just stand up and start running no the strategy is your advantage in any battle ask any military man they call operation ABC that ABC is the strategy for the victory if they say operation this the military people know that this is the formula we are using for the takeover strategy when we started i remember when god came and told me said son the last meeting for every month is dedicated for a miracle service it's a strategy you will just get up blindly and go and make the last meeting of your own program to a miracle service and not get any result because it is a strategy every strategy has an anointing on it you see us gather prayer requests here and i pray on it for bishop oyedeko his strategy is the power of the spoken word you may not see anybody fall down under the anointing while he's speaking but the strategy is that he uses the creative word power of the word or a robot his strategy was to lay hands he didn't just speak if there were 1000 people or a robot will lay hands one by one but if he touches you be sure you are standing up strategy for Benny Hinn is to worship very sensitive annoying worship sometimes he can tell everybody hush and you are saying what is this I remember once upon a time they had a program with Archbishop Benson Idahosa and he was worshipping, worshipping and one time Idahosa came and collected the mic and said rain is coming and Idahosa just started shouting and that's how people started getting healed because the strategies are different William Branham will stand and say the angel that was assigned to him has not come and that's how he will wear those people there William Branham will stand like a herbalist and say he's apologizing let the people be patient and then at a point he will just say the angel has come word of knowledge he will start moving in a strange way and people attacked him he said that's the blueprint that was given every man of god if he sits down and he's honest with you he will tell you the strategy there is how i know the power of god is ready to move i can't teach you i can teach you generically but there is a strategy it's like the palm of your hand is wired for your use as a man of God, I cried to God. I said, Lord, what is the financial strategy for this ministry? Because this ministry will grow. And now, the, the mass media that is supposed to be an avenue, most churches raise finances. A major part of the finance that runs ministry is from the media. And now God is saying, give the messages free. Don't sell anything. Imagine the hundreds of millions of naira that it would have brought. And now it has gone. Lord, you have to reveal it. Ah! When he comes to you, my God, when my God comes to you, he will tell you something that does not make sense. But you are stupid enough to take it as a strategy. You will join those who are clapping for you to wonder and say, Lord, I fear you. Hallelujah. Yes. There is a strategy. There is a way we do ministry here. It's a strategy that God gave. For Dr. Olukoya is prayer. He will raise prayer points and he will pray. And while you are praying in that prayer, the power of God is moving and touching people. There are many people. For Papa Iya Deboye, he will stand and in the calmness of his voice, make a prophetic declaration and people will come. For Reverend Dr. Uma Okpai, he will raise a song. And while he's dancing and singing, people are rising up. Don't copy strategies. Receive strategies. Listen. I assure you, and I want you to hear me as we round up. Believe me when I tell you this, that you will never fail. You walk with these truths that I teach you. You walk with these things that I tell you. It is arrogant to unnecessarily tamper with the equations. Many people, they don't have results yet, but they tamper with the equations. Receive it with childlike faith. Don't let anybody tell you this thing doesn't matter. Do they have the results you are looking for? There are many 
proud people and i say this with every sincerity of heart there are many proud people without results who go around talking against people who have tremendous results love everybody but don't give your ears to people who don't have results you will become like them no man can give what he doesn't have hallelujah can we pray one last prayer point i want you to challenge the spirit of laziness lukewarmness listen it says i would that thou were neither hot i mean either hot nor cold i would i desire you are not diligent and you are not completely lazy you are just somewhere in between if you are very hot i can make you hotter if you are cold i can know you are cold and help you but you are dilly-dallying in the middle of nowhere you are going to pray and cry that laziness especially the spirit many of us sincerely i love you and i don't mean to hurt or embarrass you but many of us are extremely lazy lazy to a surprising degree especially for a young man lord destroy laziness from my life lift your voice and pray financial laziness spiritual laziness intellectual laziness take it away from my life take it away from my life take it away from my life are you praying to study diligence to be valuable hallelujah please permit me to add for us one more request we are going to pray concerning this issue of value i'm sure that by god's grace i'll speak on it again for workers but we are going to pray listen 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 if you are not valuable koinonia listen to me those outside those online listen to me no matter how you convince yourself if you want to reign in today's world what you have must be exceptional if everybody has what you have there is no space for you did you hear what i said if everybody has this is not about competition if what you have can be given by another person cheaper or freer you are in trouble you must trust God to brand you with a level of value that makes you so unique. No devil of poverty or failure or mediocrity or inferiority hangs around you. I told you that a man of God was praying for me one time. And he laid hands on my head and said, Father, create a problem in his region that only him will be able to solve i thought I, in my mind i felt so bad because i said i know i'm somebody who is for the body i don't like this thing of one person outshining others what kind of prayer is this but when i understood value then i prayed that prayer and i said in the name of the lord jesus christ create something oh god for me i thought it was a joke there are many preachers but there is one joshua selman the same way there are many people but there is one Ejimi. there is one when we want to hear the voice of sam amaka cannot sing like sam sam cannot sing like amaka if we want to hear the strings elijah and the music director don't play the same thing listen when god makes you exceptionally valuable sit back and watch the power of the sabbath work in your life it will be like a charm the way men will run and come to you i tell you this thing i'm not lying to you take away your wrong mindset listen to me you want to prosper and rise in today's world is more than a job you need to master value in a way and manner 
and it will shut the mouth of darkness. I look at my life today. If you listen to what I am teaching you, my brothers and my sisters, you will sit back and wonder and say, what is this? Life is, it will look unfair. Don't think it's happening just because he's called Joshua Selman. It's not true. It's a law. Can you pray that one prayer as we're ending? I give you two, three minutes. Find a corner and cry to God. Lord, I'm not unique enough. I'm grateful for what you have made me. But I know there's something that you can put upon my life. That every time someone says, Pastor Femi, every time someone says, Pastor Alpha, I thank God for everybody for that uniqueness. Pray. Grant me the grace to be valuable. Hallelujah. Listen. Your value is what brands you. Is what identifies you as to whether you are rewardable or not. Pastor Lawrence is so good in the graphics. When you needed to, to write the names of School of Ministry students, as anointed as I am, you didn't come to meet me. Because with respect to that, I'm totally not valuable. It's not an insult, it's the truth. Tomorrow, when we want to cook for the workers, you are not going to meet Joshua Selman. Nobody has ever come to meet me for advice on cooking. As sincere as I am. You won't come because you don't consider me that valuable. Nobody has invited me today to sing praise and worship. Does it mean I cannot sing? But I'm not that valuable. There are many options. Why should you be picked when there are easy options to you? I vowed and I told God, I will never go and minister anywhere that they'll say, Mr. Man, thank you, this is your honorarium, go. And the next time they discuss, when they bring Joshua, they say, no, please, no, no way. I will never do that. So I pay the price in the word. I pay the price in prayer. I pay the price to know what to do and what not to do. That's the key. And it will bring you to to suck the breast of kings. They will give you access to their treasures. Treasures that they would not even give their relatives. And you will stand and wonder and say, life can be this easy. Koinonia, hear me. If no one is looking for you, it's because you are not valuable enough. Don't be angry. Take this truly. If you are not valuable enough, nobody will look for you. Are we together? Yes. There are people I've met in my life. It's amazing how as soon as I met them and discern their value, those who used to provide that area of value, they are, the doors of my favor towards them close immediately. There are people like that. Are we together? There are people who are doing one thing or the other for me. It's dangerous if you are easily replaceable I say it again it is dangerous when you become easily replaceable that means in this life you will not amount to much the consequence is that you will be angry you will be resentful you will hate everyone that's why I'm an advocate for mastery you have to trust God for grace to know whatever is granted you grace to do and know it well if it means adding educational qualification to rise to that position of uniqueness do it if it means reorienting your mind even against what you study do it whatever price it takes to stand you out don't forget to like 
Paul, a man approached of God. You stand out. If you are new here, not in a competitive way, but in a unique way that brands you. That's why I don't have enemies. I don't insult anybody. I don't fight anybody. I'm more than grateful to be me. I don't think it would have happened that way if I were not this valuable. If I were not the one behind all the mighty testimonies by the Spirit of God that this ministry enjoys, probably I would have joined the many people insulting others. Do you know when you have results you don't hate? It's true. It's true. There's no need for it. I live a very happy and peaceful life. That's why I love the body of Christ. I honor everyone. Resentment is a product of an awareness that a replacement is likely to happen to you. But when you stand in a position on part of, look at Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn is friends with him. He can bring any man of God to his program and talk with joy. Because we are talking of Benny Hinn here. By the privilege of the grace of God, Benny Hinn is Benny Hinn till he goes to be with the Lord. Kenneth Copeland is Kenneth Copeland. You can preach everything. When Kenneth Copeland comes, he is Kenneth Copeland. God's system for faith. insecurity and competition and backbiting and all of these things happen when there is an intrinsic fear that a system of value higher than yours is within a vicinity so rather than fighting you trust god and say lord lift me the popular hymn says lord lift me up and let me stand huh? by faith on heaven's table land it says a higher plane than i found lord set my feet on higher ground that's the prayer father we thank you for tonight I have spoken to your people addressing what may be the gap between them and their results and Lord I have spoken by your spirit as you have inspired me I ask tonight in the name of Jesus that these words will be spirit and life to the listeners Lord, as they subscribe to the laws of diligence, I pray that their results will come speedily. In the name of Jesus, that those who laugh at you now, their tongues will cleave to the roof of their teeth because they will see the wonder-working power of God in your life. I pray for someone here who may be discouraged and is wondering, Lord, I've done my best. I've done my best. I speak a word of hope for you right now. And I declare that you will have the last laugh in the name of Jesus. That which you are doing by the Spirit will work for you. It may take time, but as surely as the sun arises after a night time, your result will come. I pray for the grace to be strategic in your approach. That you will not dissipate energy randomly. And I pray for the fortitude to be sacrificial and that with pleasure. In the name of Jesus Christ, finally I pray for you that in the name of Jesus, the grace and the ability to be tenacious and unbending, the resolve to stay through, may that grace be supplied you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands to Jesus very quickly. Lord, we thank you. There's someone here saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. We're in a hurry. But it's no license for me to leave this place without a genuine encounter with Jesus. Another person is saying, Apostle, I love God. But the way my life is right now, I think that I really need a restoration. You may be inside, you may be outside. Wherever you are, please, I like you. Even if it's just one of you, be bold, be courageous. Take that step and walk towards me right now. I want to pray for you. Koinonia, appreciate them someone is coming god bless you someone is coming is this the best you can do koinonia there are people outside if you are coming join them quickly god bless you for your courage god bless you for your courage keep clapping koinonia jesus is bringing them jesus is bringing them those coming from outside please clear the way for them very quickly join quickly i want to pray now hallelujah thank you so much those of you in front i love you and i appreciate you while we wait for those outside to quickly join them if there are any i want you to raise your right hand say after me very sincerely say lord jesus 
Say, Lord Jesus. Please join them. Join them, my sister. God bless you. Those online, you can join them to say, Lord Jesus, I love you. Say it again. I love you. And I believe that you are the Son of God. Tonight, I ask you to forgive my sins, to cleanse me with your precious blood. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life. I declare that from tonight, I'm a child of God. Amen. Thank you so much for this great decision. Please follow the lady waving her hands. All of you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.